And Landry, there's a lot of good signs for this SNU defense. Yeah, certainly. And, uh, you know, the defense is young. You know, a lot of new faces on the defense. Defensive line, interior defensive line is is really young in particular, and there's a lot of talent there too. And it seemed like the last two games, uh, those young players played really well. And defensively, there was some more cohesion. Um, kind of after a frustrating start to the season. But, you know, we even saw glimpses of it in the in their first outing against Harding. Uh, and certainly the defense um, will have to, to tackle well. Um, and that sounds, you know, Luke, we say this every game, but that sounds like a, a no-brainer. And in, in some ways it is. But when we say tackle well, more specifically, shooting your hands through the tackle. And Coach even said taking that next step uh, through the tackle. So not trying to lunge, but follow through. Uh, because uh, you tackle well against this Bulldog team, and you're going to put yourself in a really, really good place to win the game. Great crowd on hand as we count down to kickoff here in Bethany. Let's take a look at the schedule around the Great American Conference this afternoon. SNU, the only afternoon game this afternoon, so no score updates throughout the afternoon today. Oklahoma Baptist going down to Ada to take on East Central. These are all 6 o'clock kickoffs. Arkansas Tech travels down to take on Southern Arkansas. Northwestern down in Durant taking on Southeastern. That's a battle of two winless teams down in Durant this evening. Washita Baptist is at Arkansas Monticello, but the big one today, Harding on the road at Henderson State, a top 25 matchup. For those two schools, that one should be a dandy, a really good yeah. defensive battle between those two this evening. We'll t step aside for a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk with head coach Dustin Hayda and get our keys to the game players to watch and the kickoff from Bethany. Southern Nazarene football coming up right up. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Renew is the University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session. Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu. And we're joined now by SNU head coach Dustin Hayda, the Crimson Storm taking on Southwestern Oklahoma State today. And Dustin back home after two road games. 
two and one, first time over 500 since 2017. Your thoughts on the first quarter of the season? Well, we had that rough start and, and uh, against Harding, but since then we've kind of found our footing offensively and playing really good defense, really in, in situations where we need to play good defense, we're playing good defense. So uh, exceptional defense on the goal line for the last two weeks, which has been unbelievably awesome. And then, you know, getting our footing on offense and being pretty as well-rounded as we can be between run, not just run pass, but ball distribution. I know the stats look lopsided sometimes, but um, really getting active on our perimeter last week and, and has been good. So um, I'm excited for where we are right now. We've got a ton of football left to play and a ton of improvements to make, but uh, we love learning from wins. And uh, that's what we've been talking about a lot this week and last week. You know, don't don't take a loss to, to have to learn something. So we've been trying to learn from wins, and I'd much rather learn from wins than, than losses for sure. You're at a spot right now as a program where it seems every week you're, you know, on the verge of setting a new school record in yards or, you know, first time over 500 at this stage of the season, things like that. What's that like, you know, getting to, you know, set these new marks, these new standards for the program? We kind of don't even think about it. We don't talk about it. We just kind of let it come to us. And, and it's just happening, basically, um, through our goal of playing great football and being the best player that we can be on that day. That stuff's just kind of happening. I know that's weird to say, but when you got guys whose goal is to just play as, as hard as they can and play as, as well as they can, um, then that stuff does just just happen. Um, now there's great effort involved with that, um, but it's a byproduct of of just playing each play and and making the right read and playing with great effort and technique. And so um, all that stuff's great, but it just I think it just reflects on our focus on on playing this play and and this game um, truly is a, a one and zero mentality for us and and really a play by play. Um, so flushing bad stuff and moving on and flushing good stuff uh, and moving on. So it's kind of weird to say that that stuff just happens, but it, it's kind of just happens. Uh, it's fun to look back on it at the end of a game. Um, but really, when you're in the midst of it, we just want to be successful with what we're doing and, and play this play as well as we can. Today's opponent, Southwestern. Uh, comes in 0-3, but a lot of challenges, especially for your offense against a very strong front seven for the Bulldogs. Yeah, for sure, and not not many teams have been able to have much success running on them, you know, in these first three games, and they have played uh, Washtenaw Baptist. So definitely give us some – it's it's kind of strength on strength um, when you look at their run defense and our run offense. And so that will be an interesting matchup. They're talented. They run to the ball well. They're big and physical, and so – um, that'll be a great challenge for us. And then, you know, just diversity of offense, the stuff they're doing offensively is kind of diverse, and they're growing in that. Um, and so that's something that's always a challenge too. So um, we just we just want to play great football and, and make the right reads on both sides of the ball, and regardless of what they throw at us um, offensively, be able to adjust to that and go. Maybe there are going to be some surprises, and, and so we're ready for that. But... Uh, definitely their strength is their front seven and and so just like every week man we got block and on defense we got to tackle and we've got to eliminate turnover stuff so that's kind of where we're at this week well dustin thank you so much for your time as always and best of luck today against southwestern thank you and welcome back to bethany just about set to go from snu football stadium between the Crimson Storm of Southern Nazarene and the Bulldogs of Southwestern Oklahoma State. SNU will receive to start this one. Joe Flores and Braxton Bird back deep to receive. Landry, your keys for the game. Yeah, certainly. Let's start with the offense. I think offensively, run the ball, run the ball, and run the ball effectively. Uh, that is SNU's MO. And uh, if you haven't watched SNU and this is your first time, they will run the ball in every form or fashion that they can, but mainly with their quarterback, Gage Porter. I expect him to have a tremendous game today and to set up the offense for some explosive plays as well. Defensively, uh, I think just do your job. Make tackles, make the plays, follow your reads, watch for trick plays, be, be patient, and uh, when the plays are there to make, make them. So tackle well, I guess, is my key to the game for the defense. Luke, what about you? 
yeah, I think mastering the front seven of the Bulldogs and then, like you said, defensively making tackles going to be key today. Brandon McCary on to kick this one away for the Bulldogs. We are underway. Ball's going to sail over Bird's head into the end zone. And that will bring out the SNU offense. A bit of difference on the offensive line for SNU. Caleb yeah. Bates out for the season with injury. So we'll see who the starting group comes out. It looks like Morales, David Morales will get the start at right tackle. But it will be Will McCune, a sophomore out of Fisher, Texas, getting the start at right guard in place of Bates. Got David Armijo, Andy Cardenas, Zach Cizek, Will McCune, David Morales from left to right across the formation. One wide receiver to the left, three to the right. Well, quarterback Gage Porter takes a snap, bubbles it out to Angel Ramirez, who is decked in the backfield by DeAndre Scott. It's a five-yard loss on first down, and Ramirez slow to get up. Scott, the senior out of Ardmore, came flying in unblocked. And Angel Ramirez paid the price on that reception. Loss of five, second and 15. Yeah, and it looked like just a missed blocking assignment there. They had the numbers to the boundary to run the, the swing pass, but uh, someone went to the wrong defender and, and left an open shot. So second and 15, ball on the right hash. Porter takes it. Gives it to Farr, running left. Jarrell Farr cuts up field at the 30, spins away from a couple tacklers, and crosses the 35, a first down up to the 36-yard line, a gain of 16 yards. Yeah, this, this Bulldog defense has some great outside linebackers, and they're great when they're coming downhill. So expect to see a lot of SNU making their reads to the outside uh, of the field to get people like Jarrell Farr, who are quick and fast, using that speed to cut up field by the boundary. Jarrell Farr, a 70-yard touchdown run in the final moments last week in Alva to put the icing on the cake for SNU. Ball on the left hash, first and 10 from the 36. Farr goes in motion to the left. Porter gives it to Carlos Zepeda into the teeth of the Bulldogs defense. He rumbles for a gain of two. Taken down by Cameron Guyton, Richard Silva losing his helmet for the Bulldogs. He'll come out. Landry, the... Bulldogs front, strong, big, a yep. lot of big guys, and the linebackers as well. Logan Monroe and Richard Silva there in the middle, number two and number three, respectively, in the conference in tackles this season. Yeah, absolutely. That, And if your linebackers are leading the conference in tackles, it means your D-line is usually doing its job. Second and nine, ball on the left hash, four SNU, three wide receivers to the right. Porter takes the snap. Gives to Farr, running to the right. Farr in trouble. Stutter steps and is able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Taken down by Scott and R.J. Powell. So it will be third down and nine now for SNU. 12.35 to go first quarter. No score in this first possession of the game. SNU's first home game in three weeks since the season opener against Harding. Yeah, and I don't think it's cooled down temperature-wise at all since that first game. It's been about a month, but it is hot and humid here today. Already, Luke, we've seen Jarrell Farr getting motion across the formation with two stretch play, stretch run plays. I expect to see a lot more of that. Farr motions out to the left with the ball on the right hash. Porter takes a snap, rolls to the left, sets his feet, fires to the sideline, looking for Asa Robertson. It's incomplete as he overthrew the junior cutting across the field had him open there yep. just a little overthrow yeah it's just a flood uh concept play there you play action one way and you have all your wide receivers running to one boundary with your quarterback running the exact same way uh, and it seems like porter just didn't get his feet planted in the ground when he threw that ball a little off his back foot and it sailed on him adam atwell on to punt this one away for the crimson storm Seven punts this season, averaging just a tick under 40 yards. A sophomore from League City, Texas. Good for sixth in the conference. Taking over for Ryan Reed. Back deep for the Bulldogs is Troy Henderson. Standing just inside his own 25. So snap, at well, plenty of time. Low knuckleballer. Bounces at the 30. And dies. Might have hit a Bulldog in the back. Yes. SNU's on the ball. Not sure who it hit. Two players were tangled up there. Let's see what the officials rule here. Yeah, they're, they're certainly going to talk about it. It was hard to tell from our angle 
But that ball just died when it hit the ground, and it seemed like a bulldog just ran right into it. Here comes the offense, Luke. And so the ruling is that the Swasu player was blocked into the ball. And so, therefore, it will be Southwestern football. Yeah, and to the referee's credit, that did seem to be two guys engaged in, in blocking right there. So, by rule, SNU's defense will get some, some time today. See if they can force a three and out here quickly. Now there's some confusion as typically there's two there's two media timeouts per quarter. And the official did not blow one there. Typically it's the first two breaks of each quarter, but official opting to not use one there, so SNU hurriedly coming out on the field. Calvin Cloud, the sophomore from Loveland, Ohio, is the quarterback for the Bulldogs. The ball set up on the left hash, two wide to the right, one to the left. Nick Blanchard, Cam Flowers, Austin Martin, and David Omasigo across the defensive line for SNU. There's a snap. Cloud back to pass. Sets his feet. Fires down the middle of the field. It's tipped up and nearly intercepted. He was looking for Elijah Reed. Falls incomplete, but Reed tipped it up into the air, and Aaron Randall nearly made a diving interception just on the SNU side of midfield. Yeah, and Holden Hill also in there on the play. And that seemed like everybody... Well, that was in the vicinity of the ball. It seemed to slip on the turf at some point. So just kind of a weird play, underthrown ball, good defense. Second and 10, Cloud back to pass, looking right, taking a shot down the far sideline. It falls incomplete, looking for Taylor Tochus. It'll bring up third down and 10. Yeah, and already the Bulldogs are trying to test this secondary of the Crimson Storm. Certainly a new and young secondary. Um, so expect that probably from game to game. But so far, holding up well, playing good coverage. Big third down to start the game. Third and 10 for the Bulldogs. See if SNU brings pressure. And a false start coming up on the Bulldogs. The right side of the line, Damian Powell and Daniel Ballinger with the movement up front. Ballinger getting the start at right guard in place of the junior Deshaun Denny. Yeah, and that's uh, that false start is just a hard count, right? So you can say call in the huddle or before the snap, you know how many how many times a quarterback's going to say hut or whatever word they use, and right side of the offensive line must not get the memo. So now third and fifteen, Cloud back to pass, rolls to the right as he's flushed. Fires it to the sideline. It's Tosquez, and he's got the first down across the 40-yard line. And a big completion and conversion there for the Bulldogs. No one, no one's really out of position there for the Crimson Storm. Just a breakdown. When the quarterback escapes a pocket like that, you have linebackers who cheat up to stop the run. Natural thing to do, which usually leaves some room in behind. The thing, though, that, that is worth mentioning on that play is the tackling uh, at the end. Yeah, they got the wide receiver out of bounds, but no arms, no legs driving through that tackle. First and 10 Bulldogs from their own 42-yard line. Cloud back to pass. Looking to the sideline, fires it out for his tight end, Karsek. Jacob Karsek with the catch. He stood up by Jake Wright and belted down by Aaron Randall at the 46-yard line. It's a gain of four on first down, second and six upcoming. Jake Wright, a guy who had a huge game against Harding yeah. and has been great for us and you all year, Landry. Oh, certainly. I mean, he he was all over the place in Harding, and and uh, Coach Hayda said the same thing. That he's really proud of him. Uh, hard worker, quiet guy, but he's all over the place and makes all kinds of plays he shouldn't make just by sheer effort. Probably ten, the smallest defender on the on the field too right now. Just five seven ten thirty five to go first quarter, second and six. The give to Ethan Heisch in the backfield sheds a couple tacklers, breaks across midfield, still running hard, and is finally wrestled down by Jalen Mays at the SNU. 42-yard line. So big gain there of 10-plus for Heisch and another first down for the Bulldogs.
Yeah, and, you know, a little bit of arm tackling there. You know, if they if they follow through with that, that first contact, it's about a two-yard gain. And good, it's good hard run by the running back. Don't want to discredit that by any means. But, but certainly these are correctable things that SNU can take advantage of. Ball right in the middle of the field. One wide receiver either side. Tight end on either side of the line. A man in motion to the top of the formation. Cloud back to pass. Looking right. Slides to his left. Now he's going to escape outside the pocket. Across the 35 he goes. And out of bounds into the SNU sideline. Mark him out at the 34. A gain of eight yards for Cloud as that left side of the formation just totally vacated. Well, and I, you know, I'm not sure that there was even a wide receiver down here, Luke. By the time he was ready to throw, which means there's no secondary defender there to help him or to help on the run support. You got the ninja package out here. <laughs> ta tackled either side and Cloud threw it too far inside. If Jake Wright had been looking for the ball, might have been a pick six, but it falls incomplete. Now it will be third and two from the SNU 34-yard line. You don't see the ninja package every day, a little... Ode to Mike Leach, I guess, from the Bulldogs, but you know, not much you can run out of Ninja Package either. Normally just to screen or to, to make the defense burn a timeout. SNU ready for the task today. Two wide to either side for the Bulldogs. Third and two with the ball at the left hash. Cloud flips it ahead to the wide receiver on the screen. That's number 28, Dejon Thomas, junior out of San Diego, and he picks up Three yards to the 31-yard line. It's a first down for the Bulldogs. Jalen Mays hobbles off for SNU. Hiram Flores will take his place at safety. So first and 10 Bulldogs, 8.53 to go. First quarter, scoreless game thus far. SNU forced to punt on their first possession of the ball game. Cloud, back to pass. Fires it, looking for Tosquez, and he's got a sliding catch Yeah, not at the 15-yard line. Josh a... Johnson pleading that the ball hit the turf, but it looked like Tosquez got his hands underneath the football, and it's a first down for the Bulldogs at the 14-yard line. Josh Johnson played that perfectly. It wasn't a great throw, just a great catch by Tosquez. In the red zone are the Bulldogs, just the fifth red zone trip for the Bulldogs offense this season. Cloud checks. Ball on the right hash. Three wide receivers left. One right. Cloud gives to Heish. Falling blockers up the middle. He's got space. Breaks a tackle. Five touchdown Bulldogs. So Southwestern takes their first possession of the game straight down the field and puts up the first points of the game with 7.56 to go in the opening quarter. Yeah, and it looked like just an inside zone for the touchdown there. Nothing, nothing fancy, but... Uh, that's the first time they've run inside zone all game. Kind of a frustrating moment for the Crimson Storm defense. Several third downs you could have gotten off the field. Big plays given up. It's so, not the start they wanted. So McCarry on for the extra point. Operation smooth. And the kick is good. 7.56 to go in the first quarter. The Bulldogs lead the Crimson Storm 7-0. We'll take a break and be back after these messages.
Welcome back to Bethany. Southern Nazarene trailing Southwestern Oklahoma State. 7-0, 7 56 to go in the first quarter. Ethan Heisch, the 14-yard touchdown scamper on the opening possession for the Bulldogs offense as they go 10 plays, 75 yards. And Landry, the SNU offense needing to respond here. Yeah, certainly. They, they need to take some pressure off the defense. Uh, you know, they started good first down on the second play, but but need to carry on uh, that momentum. The run up in the boot for McCarry. Braxton Bird going to have a chance from the goal line. Up the right hash. He's got space in the middle. Cuts. Tried to cut back to the left side. Missed the lane. And he's taken down at the 28-yard line. A strong return from Bird. Yes. Might have been six if he'd stayed on his original yeah, he, path. He certainly would have had a chance at it. I mean, that. That path is right there, and it's it's much easier for us who are above the play to see kind of the lanes open up. But when you're running it, it is much more difficult. But uh, that's one thing Coach Hayda mentioned too, just special teams, kick return in particular, uh, trying to hit those lanes with confidence. Um, they've been doing that the last few games. Angel Ramirez back out there after taking a big shot on the first play of the game. Aaron Fellow is the main emotion. Ball in the middle of the field. Porter. Draw all the way is stood up after a gain of two. Cameron Guyton on the tackle along with Richard Silva for the Bulldogs. Second down and eight. Yeah, first Gage Porter run there. It's it's Gage Porter all the way on that one. Quarterback draw, and I think Coach Hayda is ready to get his, his quarterback's feet going. Porter second in the nation in carries, in yards. Tied for first in touchdowns and second in yards per game thus far this season. Nearly 500 yards rushing through the first three games. Two wide receivers either side. Ball in the right hash. Fellows comes in motion to the near side. Takes the handoff. One on one. Gets around the defender but doesn't have enough space to get up field. Nice job there by Zach Roberts forcing him out of bounds after a gain of two. It'll be third down and six from the SNU 32-yard line. Yeah, and third and six is, is a difficult play position for the Storm. You know, they like to run the ball. They like third and short. Who doesn't? Uh, but the third and six play calling uh, is, is a little shorter of a list than other options. Porter, back to pass, and we got movement. Looked like Andy Cardenas, the left guard, with a slight flinch, warranting the false start. So that will change the calculus a little bit, make it third down and 11 back at the 27-yard line. Yeah, so third and six play calling packages might be small. Third and 11 is, is smaller. SNU a little heavier on the penalty so far this year. Nine per game for 73 yards per game thus far. Ball on the right hash. Two wide receivers to the top. Dalen Smith to the bottom. Porter rolls to his right. Fires it over the middle. He's got his tight end. Dalen Smith at the 40-yard line. That's enough for the first down as he's chopped down by Jamie and Mitchell. Yeah, and it looked like he was telling 27 fellows to go up the field. Fellows starts going up the field, and as he's looking at fellows, the, the tight end just comes right across the formation and gets exactly what they need. Big play. Uh, by the Crimson Storm offense. Good pr pass protection by the offensive line. Under six to go. First quarter, 7 nothing Bulldogs. Three wide receivers left, one to the right. Fellows now comes in motion to the right. Porter, quarterback draw all the way. Scoots across the 45, tries to get outside. He does, 50, and he yeah. flags fly everywhere from three different officials. Looks like we might get a block in the back on one side. Yeah, it looks potentially a blindside block. We'll see what they rule it. I saw the, the block in the back. I think Robertson might be the the penalty. The penalty would be on him, but I don't think he was trying to block in the back. I think he just ran into him. It's unfortunate. It is the block in the back on Asa Robertson, but fortunately for SNU, the penalty occurred at the 10-yard mark, so 10 yards from the spot makes it first and 10 <laughs> once again. They might have lost three inches. Yeah. 
just a nose of a football. So we'll basically just replay the down with the ball on the left hash. Robertson to the top of the formation. Fellows and Andrew Tisdale to the near side. Ramirez is the back to the right of Porter. Porter takes a snap, fakes the give to Robertson. Porter across the 40-yard line up to the 43 on first down. Second and seven upcoming. Yeah, you know, when you watch the Crimson Storm offense, you, we don't always realize how many reads Gage Porter is making before the play. That's one of the benefits we get, Luke, is to sit down with Coach Hayda and ask him some of those questions. In a game like Swasu, he might read the defensive end one play and then the outside linebacker one play. And then, you know, maybe even the Mike linebacker another play. It's it's a complex offense. It takes time. Uh, and Gage Porter is, to Coach Hayda, in Coach Hayda's opinion, is the is the best reader of this offense. Porter gives it to Angel Ramirez. He's swallowed up by Guyton, escapes. And I think we're going to get a face mask here as Ramirez trying to get away from a host of Bulldogs. The SNU sideline reacting positively, and I think that's going to give SNU a first down. And that is the case. So the face mask on the Bulldogs will give SNU 15 yards across midfield and a first down at the Swasu 42-yard line. He has one of those accidental face masks. He's just falling out of the pile and now he's trying to grab something and grabs a bit too much of the face mask. But good run by Angel Ramirez. I mean, he's bottled up five yards in the backfield and just keeps his feet churning upfield. And he'd have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but we'll take the penalty instead this time. First and 10, Crimson Storm. Three wide receivers right. Porter looking that way. Now he's in trouble. Escapes pressure. He got space up the middle. Crosses the 40, but a nice job tracking him down from behind by Richard Silva. Limits the damage to just five <laughs> yards, and that was one step or two away from uh, a house call. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And it was one step or two away from a 10-yard sack. I mean, this is Gage Porter at his finest, you know, making – a pocket looked like it's closing in around him. Just takes one little step up, feels comfortable back there. And then all of a sudden, he's got green grass in front of him. 3.40 to go first quarter. Bulldogs lead this one 7 nothing with the Crimson Storm on the move in Swasu territory. The Bulldogs 37-yard line. Ball in the middle of the field, second down and five. Two wide receivers right. Asa Robertson to the left. Angel Ramirez motions out to the left. Quick hitter over the middle to Aaron Fellows. He's got it inside the 30 at the 29-yard line. And that's a first down for the Crimson Storm. Jarvis Davis trots onto the field as Gage Porter trots off for a brief moment. Looks like he's a little hobbled. Hobbled or winded, one of the two. Yeah, maybe maybe a little bit of both, but they have great confidence in Jarvis. Expect them to slow the game down a little bit with Jarvis in. Give Gage Porter as much time as he needs to catch his breath. Coach Hayden mentioning that Jarvis has handled the surprise of Gage coming back to quote him perfectly. Mm -hmm. There's a snap. Davis fakes the give to Fellows. Rolling to his left. Now he's in trouble. Now he's scrambling back and he's sacked by R.J. Powell all the way back at the 45-yard line. It's a loss of 16. I'll give him the 44s. They're making a loss of 15 on first down. And Davis had time, just couldn't yeah. pull the trigger. Yeah, and, you know, no one was open. I mean, it's good coverage by the Bulldogs. But in a situation like that, as soon as you break the pocket, you feel pressure like that. I want to throw the ball away. Take that extra couple steps to see if something would open up. So SNU now very behind the sticks with two minutes to go in the first quarter. Ball on the right hash. Three wide receivers left, one to the right. Porter back into the game. Second down and 25. Porter bobbled the snap, has it now, fires a little bit too high for Donovan Hill. It's going to be, Swasu says they have a pick. It looked pretty clear that it hit the ground from here. And the officials say it is an interception. Yeah, and you know, Intercepted by Mason Doherty. You know, Coach Hayda's has already got his challenge flag out. I, I think he might feel as confident as you do, Luke. There it goes on the ground. That looked pretty clear from our angle. It, we had the, the nice window right into his arms. It 
certainly bounced up. Now the question will be on replay is, was that a bounce up off his arms or a bounce up off the turf? Yes, and it was that bounce, you know, that turf bounce is a pretty distinct bounce. You know, it's a little springy. The the real the real thing now is that, you know, these refs are going to go use an iPad and zoom in as best as they can to see. So, unfortunately, this is not, uh, you know, what do they use on? It's not the NFL. Yeah, that's the sun, for sure. Sunday night football, right? They're not, they don't have, uh, you know, zoom and enhance. <laughs> 138 to go in the first quarter. If this is incomplete, SNU facing a third down and 25 going into a fairly stiff breeze. So Landry, do you have do you have two plays here from the 43 yard line, assuming that this is overturned? Are you looking at two plays here to get the first down if you're SNU kind of caught in no man's land with this wind? Yeah, I mean, it, it depends on third down, right? So if you get a chunk play on third down, maybe you do, maybe you do. But you're definitely not kicking a field goal into the wind. You know, Luke, it might be one of those things where you actually want to take a short punt to trap uh, a team who's about to have to go into the wind this this next drive uh, with the ball. So uh, third down will tell us a lot, but, you know, I don't know. I think if it's third and anything five and under, probably going for it, or fourth, excuse me, fourth and five and under, probably going for it here. But. Officials continue to huddle under the tent down on the sideline to our right from the press box. Yeah, Luke, last time we covered a game, there was a, a challenge flag thrown by Coach Ada, who ironically said before the game that he didn't expect to throw it all season and uh, threw it this game, uh, that game, and now this game, uh, and won his first challenge. So uh, it does show that uh, these reviews have been helpful to um, to the conference and to Division II football. You know, Landry, something overlooked on – on my part, at least, the touchdown by the Bulldogs on their first drive, their first points in the first half Oof. all season long. That's not a great stat, Luke. Not at all. But you look at this Bulldogs team. It's their third interim head coach, Rizel McCoy, their third coach in three years hmm. as the officials make their way out of the tent. We'll get the ruling from our referee. So it is an incomplete pass, so it will remain SNU football. Third down and 25 from the Bulldogs' 44-yard line. Again, Bulldogs on their third head coach in three years. Chet Pobolish resigning after the 2021 season, bringing Josh Kirkland from Eastern New Mexico Highlands for the 2022 season. He leaves in the offseason to go be the director of player personnel at the University of North Texas. And now Rizel McCoy getting an opportunity to prove himself with the 2023 season with the interim tag. Of course, interim head coach Chris McCullough down at East Central last year made the most of his yeah. interim gig, getting the head coaching job before leaving for UT Permian Basin in the offseason. So yeah. Now, so now the officials uh, huddling about something else and getting everything clarified that it is third down just double checking i guess <laughs> went to a high school game last year where there were two third downs in a row so good thing they're checking third and 25 ball on the right hash carlos cepeda is the back to the right of porter who motions asa robertson near to the formation porter back to pass he's got time good protection up front has nothing but time now the pocket begins to break down. Porter escapes to his right, fires it into the middle of the field. He's got Asa Robertson wide open inside the 20-yard line. And Robertson converts on third and 25 all the way to the 15-yard line. You know, it's easy on this play to highlight Gage Porter. And and right, rightfully slow. Good throw, good scramble. He's so talented with his legs. If you're a wide receiver, you just ran about a 100-yard sprint for 10 seconds, right? Like that is that is quite the uh, endur endurance, uh, but also the offensive line. Now the Bulldogs only rushed three, but man, they held up the whole time. Gage Porter had 
so much time and just waited until Asa Robert, Robertson uh, snuck, snuck open. Under a minute to play in first quarter, first and 10. Porter fakes the give to Donald May, flings it to the far sideline to Aaron Fellows on a nice job by Mason Darty, who got there right as the ball did to deflect that away incomplete. Yeah, and, and not a bad throw by Porter. It had plenty of uh, juice on it, but it's a long throw. That is a long throw to go from the middle of the field at your 15 to the goal line. Uh, and he had his back swinging out of the backfield. I think that probably would have been a little bit of an easier throw and uh, no one on him. Uh, so sometimes before the snap, you know what's going to be open because you practice it all week. But when the play is happening, some of the answers might be the simpler one right in front of you. Second and 10, ball on the right hash. Donald May remains in the backfield. Porter rolling to the left, cuts it upfield, tries to make a man miss and falls across the 15 and across Logan Monroe down to the 13-yard line. It'll be third down and eight for the Crimson Storm. Let's see if SNU opts to run a play before the end of the quarter. 20 seconds on the clock. They don't seem to be in too big of a rush as no. Jarrell Farr subs in for Aaron Fellows. No need to rush here. I mean, you And are. I think, yep, SNU is going to take this one to the second quarter. So... A fairly uneventful quarter. The Bulldogs with the only points in the game thus far. They lead 7-0 as we head to the second stanza. And you with a big third down coming up out of the timeout. We'll be back with more. This is SNU Football. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Welcome back to Bethany. About to get underway in the second quarter with the Crimson Storm trailing Southwestern 7 to nothing. Luke McConnell, Landry Franks with you here on a sultry afternoon in September. Let's take a look at the Great American Conference standings. The big three of Harding, Henderson State, Washtenaw Baptist atop the standings, each at 3-0. and One of those teams will not be undefeated after today. Well, potentially two, but yeah. we're going to be realistic here. Yeah. Harding and Henderson State tangling in Arkadelphia. That game's at 6 o'clock. Should be a good one. Arkansas Monticello, Oklahoma Baptist, Southern Arkansas, and Southern Nazarene following those trio at 2-1. and one. East Central, the lone 1-2 and two team. Arkansas Tech, Northwestern, Southeastern, and Southwestern Oklahoma State's all winless thus far. Third and eight for the Crimson Storm out of the break. Ball in the middle of the field. Two wide receivers to the left. Dalen Smith splits out to the right. Porter gives it to Jarrell Farr, running around the left side. He's at the 10, and he's belts it out of bounds at about the seven or eight yard line. They'll mark him out at the eight. Let's see what the... Yeah, and the penalty is that flag came out right at the start of the play, and usually that's a legal formation or offside on the defense. It's hard to say. Might have been illegal shift on Smith. Yeah. It wasn't set. Real far. On S and U. Hanging his head down, yeah. It would be fourth down and three. So it is a legal formation on the Crimson Storm. The Bulldogs accept the penalty, so it will be third down and 13 now for the Crimson Storm. They do have the wind at their back yep. here in the second quarter. You know, you'd probably take a conservative shot. I mean, I don't know if there is 
I'm a, that, that might be an oxymoron, right? But you want to go probably towards the end zone. Not thinking two down territory here. You trust your kicker. You're in good field goal range. Um, you also don't want to turn the ball over. Too wide either side. Porter fakes the give to Zapata. Pressure up the middle. Porter's got lots of space. Running for the far sideline. He's got the first down, and he's forced out of bounds by Freddie Mango at the four-yard line. Gage Porter all the way to the four, 14 yards on third down. You could see it. You could see his body language, see all that green grass, and just take off. I mean, he had uh, almost a whole half of the football field open for himself. He almost looked reluctant to run it there. Yeah. He almost like, oh, I guess I'll I, take it. Coach says I should pass more. <laughs> I, I bet those words have never yeah, been spoken by Dustin Hayo. <laughs> Run more. Just so first, trust, trust your legs. So first and goal, SNU from the right hash at the four-yard line. Smith comes in motion. Porter right up the middle. Follows Zapata. Dances into the end zone. Touchdown. Crimson Storm. And we're an extra point away from being tied. Yep. And uh, just quarterback power there. That's SNU's bread and butter. And it gets Gage Porter in the end zone. He is... Something's bothering him a little bit today, but uh, touchdown is a touchdown, tie ball game, pending the extra point, I should say. Cameron Van Pruyen on for the extra point. Operation is smooth, and Van Pruyen knocks that one to the fence in the back. So, 13.51 to go before halftime. We are tied up at 7. Between the Crimson Storm and the Bulldogs, timeout on the field, we'll take it as well and be back with more SNU football after these messages. One of my favorite things about SNU was the relationships I was able to have with people, with professors, with friends. One thing that was purposely different about SNU was the integration of faith into the academics. I feel like I learned so much from that that helped prepare me for life after college, to be a husband and someday to be a father. It was a really, really transformational time in my life. My degree could have come from anywhere, but my relationships with people, I know I would not have gotten anywhere else. Go to snu.edu to apply or to schedule a visit. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Welcome back to Bethany. We are tied at seven between Southern Nazarene and Southwestern Oklahoma State. The Crimson Storm, a nine-minute march to tie the score. 16 plays, 72 yards. And Landry, that'll wear a defense down real fast. <laughs> yeah, you know, Luke, we said at the beginning of the game that they, they, the defense just needs a little bit of help. Uh, and the way you help a defense is by keeping the other team's defense on the field for nine consecutive minutes and now the defense is back on the field and they don't have to worry about the wind this time so really helpful offensive drive Van Pruyen the run up and the boot high hanging kick and it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback so the Bulldogs will start at their own 25 yard line time of possession has been a struggle obviously with the offensive struggles for the Bulldogs averaging just under 26 minutes of time of possession this season. Yeah, that's... Looking cumulative, opponents have held the ball for over 25 minutes more than the Bulldogs through three games. Yeah, and, and if you're the defensive coordinator for Swasu, man, you got to be pulling your hair out a little bit. You had so many chances to get the SNU offense off the field and, you know, give a penalty away. And... Two wide receivers left, one to the right, with the ball on the right hash. For Calvin Cloud, sophomore from Loveland, Ohio, transferred into the program last year from Akron. Cloud gives it to Ethan Heiss, puts his foot in the ground, cuts across the 25, gets up to about the 31 before he's gang tackled. Emmanuel Obina in on the stop for the Crimson Storm, along with Ben Rutherford and Jake Wright. Gain of six on first down. Yeah, and uh, if you're Swasu, I think you're thinking heavy dose of run. This wind is still pretty stiff here. He had success on the first drive with the run. 
Second and four. Clock moving down toward 13 minutes to go before halftime. Give us to Heisch. Cuts up field. Crosses the 35. Runs through a couple SNU tacklers. Still on his feet all the way up to the 46-yard line. And Landry SNU not doing a great job wrapping up and bringing to the ground thus far. No, and, you know, it seems like the... The first contact usually has arms through it, but the feet stop. And so this running back is big, strong, just dragging SNU defenders. And then the secondary is coming in with their shoulders. But you know, it takes everybody to tackle. And it takes uh, the whole defense sometimes to bring down a good uh, run carrier. But if you're that first point of contact, man, your, your goal is just to hold on and stall them. Keep your feet moving as long as you can, even if you're moving backwards. 14 yards on that carry. First and 10 from the Bulldogs 45-yard line. Give us to Troy Henderson. He's swallowed up. Might have lost half a yard. Nick Blanchard, Carter Brock, Cameron Flowers all there to bottle up. Henderson, the senior from Franklin, Tennessee. Yeah, and Carter Brock just reads that play from the beginning and is in the backfield and on, the, on that tackle quickly. Second and 10 for the Bulldogs. Ball on the right hash. Two wide left, one to the right. For Cloud, so we tick under 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. Cloud pulls it out of the belly of Henderson, scrambling to his left, pursued by Omosigo, and David Omosigo with the sack back at the 41-yard line. Yeah, and Omosigo just is just uh, faster than Cloud is, and uses his speed. You know, he kind of has to go under um, the offensive player trying to block him, and he's still able to catch up to Cloud and make the sack. Cloud 6'5", 240 on the roster. Not going to win very many foot races. No, certainly not. Against Omasigo, 5'11", 230 out of Heartland, Texas. Third down and 14 for Swasu. Ball on the left hash. A big opportunity for SNU. They get a stop and get the ball back to their offense. The Bulldogs are going to take timeout. With the play clock winding down, we'll take time out as well. 11.06 to go before halftime. 7-7, our score. We'll be back with more. This is SNU Football. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Welcome back. Third and 14 for the Bulldogs with the ball on the left hash. Cloud takes the snap. Back to pass. Under pressure. And he's going to be sacked again. Kenyatta Richardson, a junior from Mansfield, Texas, got in the backfield and took Cloud down at the 37. Another loss of four. And the punt unit coming on for Southwestern. That's right. It was blitz all the way, Luke. And uh, Swasu's offensive line just couldn't cope with the pressure. Back-to-back -back sacks for the Crimson Storm after the Bulldogs gained 20 yards on the ground on their first two plays of the drive. Dayton Thrower, freshman out of Pioneer, Oklahoma, on to punt this one away, and SNU didn't like the formation, and special teams coordinator Nathan Brown hustling out to get the timeout. Yeah, and get things reset for S and U. And you know they call this a, a spread formation punt because you you literally are spread out. But but normally in a spread formation punt you're not even that spread out. It's like they're running trips to both sides, and then they've got three guys in the middle. If you remember, unfortunately I do the the way that Dallas Cowboys ended their season last year, they had Zeke Elliott at center and they had two guys next to him. I I don't know what they were trying to do. But that's what that formation reminded me of. I mean, it was very spread out. Almost the whole whole uh, line of scrimmage had players on it. 
I don't think they had a running back at uh, center. At no, I don't. I don't think so as well. Not sure why that happened anyway, but. So two timeouts both ways with ten and a half minutes to go before halftime. Joe Flores, the sophomore from Albuquerque, New Mexico, back to receive the punt. He's standing at his own 30-yard line. This, again, a strong breeze blowing from the south today. Thrower on for his 25th punt of the season already. Sends this one. It's off the side of his foot. It hits at the 34 and takes a right turn out of bounds. Yeah, at the 33-yard line of SNU, and that's where the Crimson Storm will put the ball in play, first and 10. So Landry, the Crimson Storm offense so far, we had the nine-minute touchdown drive yep. a few moments ago. Uh, looking at the numbers, SNU's moved the ball pretty well on the ground yep. thus far. You take out the 15-yard sack by Jarvis Davis. SNU still, even with that, averaging four yards a carry, which the Bulldogs are giving up just 3.6 this season. The high that Southwestern has given up is 189 in their 58-21 to loss against Arkansas Monticello two weeks ago. SNU sitting at 49 yards on 12 carries thus far. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with you know, SNU strangely has been in positions like third and longs, uh, and uh, Swasu just can't seem to to get any pressure on on Gage Porter. I, you know, I'd be anxious to see what his scramble numbers are this game. I mean, they're higher than they normally are for him. Certainly, he scrambles quite a bit, but but man, there's just been plenty of green grass right in front of him to pick up those yards. Um, so you stop him up uh, up the middle, that's fine. Gage Porter beat you in the past game, too, even if it's with his legs. Crimson Storm come out with two wide receivers to the right. Asa Robertson to the near side of the formation. Ball is on the left hash. Angel Ramirez in the pistol set behind Gage Porter. Here's far in motion to the near side. Porter gives it to Ramirez, shuffles his feet, gets across the 35. A nice gain on first down of four yards up to the 37. Andrew Ramirez, a career-high 205 yards last year in Weatherford against the Bulldogs, part of a school record 524 yards on the ground yeah. last year against the Bulldogs. Don't think SNU's going to break that not, today. Not today and or probably anytime soon. That record is astounding. Correct me if, I, if I'm remembering right, Ramirez had several runs that he broke open. Yeah, three runs of 60-plus in that game for Ramirez, including the first play from scrimmage, a 75-yard touchdown. Ramirez has it now, cuts it upfield across the 40, lost the football, it's loose, and it's picked up by the Bulldogs. Jamie and Mitchell down the far sideline, cuts inside. He's got blockers. He's lost, he lost the football, and I think SNU fell on it back at the 13-yard line. I think it was Zach Cizek who fell on it. Oh, Let's we'll see who's got the ball. It was Cizek who got it, so that's a full change of possession. And it will be SNU football. It should be first and 10. Yep. From the from their own 14-yard line. Yeah, the the old double fumble. Yeah, should be first down. They're, they're working on it over there. That is, uh, you, you know, Luke, that's like one of those things you see on YouTube, the double fumble. Well, and the irony is super rich here, Landry, because we were talking – on Thursday with Coach Hayda about a game from his Southwestern days against Tarleton. That's right. Where they nearly won the game, got a fumble, yep. recovered it. Their defensive player lost it. Tarleton recovered, drove for a touchdown and win. Porter across the middle. He's got Asa Robertson wide open. First down reception up at the 39-yard line. A strike of 25 yards to the junior Asa Robertson. You know, that was just four verts. I mean, it. That's a that's a play that a spread offense runs, uh, and and SNU although they look like spread offense certainly is not. That's the first time we've seen that all season. Marked at the 38, first and 10. Porter dumps it over the middle again to Robertson. That one was tipped, but Robertson takes it all the way up to midfield, a gain of 12. And Asa Robertson yeah. having a tremendous day thus far. Junior spent a lot of time in the off season. He said working on his hamstring issues that he dealt with last year. And they're going fast. 
Ball on the right hash. Porter back to pass. Fires it over the middle again. It's Robertson. Oh, nearly made a one-handed catch. It falls yeah. incomplete. They must see something in this zone. Uh, of Swasu. Swasu's not running man at all today. They haven't run it, uh, at least to my knowledge, at all. And the, the middle of the field is just a wide open space. And Asa Roberts, uh, Robertson is just running right in the middle of that zone. That's three plays in a row where they've hit the exact same location on the field. Robertson heads off for a well-deserved breather. 8.08 to go, first half. 7-7 seven to seven our score. Second and 10, Crimson Storm from midfield. Two wide right. Colby Branch comes in motion to the top of the formation. Porter gives it to Carlos Zapata. He picks his way through the defense for three down to the 47-yard line. You know, and I think they're trying to get on those pass plays, those linebackers, those two middle linebackers, or the middle linebacker and outside linebackers for Swasu like to play downhill. And if they're vacating their area, that means the middle of the field is going to be open. Third and seven, two wide either side from the right hash. SNU again going quickly. Porter, back to pass. Fires it. Looking down the far side, he's got Donovan Hill. He's got it over the shoulder. Touchdown! A flag is out. And it's going to be a hold on SNU. So take the touchdown off the board and bring it back. What a throw from Gage oh, Porter and a tremendous catch from Donovan Hill. A shame it won't count. Yeah, and I don't know that I... Fully agree with the holding. I was watching the play and defensive end for Swasu got double teamed and then pancaked. Uh, but apparently there was a hold. You know, I don't have the best view. But here's the deal. Swasu's secondary cannot, cannot cover the deep ball right now. They're they're playing behind and they're not getting over the top. And Coach Hada is, is obviously seeing that uh, and is taking advantage of it. This is more pass plays from from SNU than we've seen in probably three years, Luke. I mean, in the first half. Easily. And that includes some games where they're behind and needing to catch up quickly. The holding penalty on David Armijo backs it up to the SNU 43-yard line. It's third down and 17. And with the play clock running down, SNU's going to burn their second timeout of the half. We'll take timeout as well. 7.32 to go in the first half. We're tied at 7 in Bethany. We'll be back with more SNU football after these messages. Renew is the University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session. Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu. Welcome back to Bethany. Third down and 17 facing the Crimson Storm. After the holding penalty wiped out a 47-yard touchdown yeah. pass for the Crimson Storm. Just a tough break there for SNU. Yeah, certainly is. And you had all the momentum going your way. So I still think you do. But see if the secondary makes any changes for Swasu. You got man walked down. Here comes a blitz. Order back to pass. Steps up. Now he has to run away. He was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. It was caught by Donovan Hill at the 31-yard line. Yeah. Here comes a challenge flag from Swasu. He's about eight yards behind the... And Ruzel McCoy. And furious that he couldn't get the referee's attention. So it will be reviewed here and... I think we know this one's going yeah. to come back. Porter threw that from about the 45-yard line. You know, this this is one of my favorite uh, rules. Your whole your whole body, including the football, has to be behind or in front of the line of scrimmage for this to be a penalty. You know, which is such a bizarre uh, thing. You'd think it would just be the the football or you know, if your chest is across, you know, any any part of your body. But no, every single 
ounce of you has to be across that line of scrimmage. And this might be a tricky one. You know, we don't know exactly where this camera is set up. And so the the view, the vantage point might be it might be difficult, but I don't know, Luke. He he looked quite a few. Yeah, it was it was quite and unfortunately Gage is uh you know, on the shorter, stockier side, so even if he went with the <laughs> jumping throw, split leg yeah. look stretching his don't body know out. that foot would still reach back to the forty three yard line. But again, like you said, could have no angle to show. Yeah. However, you know, we do have cameras up at the press box level in the film room a couple booths down from us so chances are that one's going to catch it going back to your question from earlier though SNU had 21 pass attempts against Harding in the season opener the most they've had in the in the recent past 33 against Washita last season and it was kind of in those first three games that yeah. coach Hayda was like yeah we're we're just going to run the ball yeah, and and after that game in particular, and even more so the East Central game the yeah. following week, that's when things really started to hit the ground uh, as far as SNU's dynamic running attack. Yeah, and you know they're running the ball well this game too. It's kind of behind the sticks more than than they normally are, but they're having a lot of success in the air. And uh, wide receivers are just outplaying the secondary. I mean that that pass should have been intercepted, right? Now we'll see if it was a pass, but certainly should have been intercepted and, uh, and, you know, just out efforting people to get the football. Would need a rules refresher, but I believe that legal forward pass is going to come with the loss of down. Yeah. So it will be fourth down if they overturn this. And it's only, I think it's only like a five yard penalty, but, but yeah, you lose it down. That's the, that's the real thing. So Here's the be. ruling from the official. So they do overturn it correctly and five yard penalty and loss of down. So SNU will be forced to punt from their own 40 yard line. And two solid reviews today by this officiating crew. Uh, it's unfortunate that it didn't go SNU's way, but two uses of challenges that have been helpful to the game. Adam Atwell on for his second punt of the afternoon. Troy Henderson standing back at his own 24-yard line. Probably back up a little bit if I were you, Troy, with this wind. <laughs> Atwell sends this one away, and he got every bit of that one. Lands right in the middle of the end zone, yeah. and he kicked that from the about his own 25-yard line, and he put that in the jet stream. Holy smokes. Yeah, Coach had a, he frustrated her uh, Punter's frustrated with himself. Coach Hayda comes over there, gives him a pat on the helmet, and says it's all right. But uh, officially a 60-yard gross yes, punt, but 40 yards net, 75-yard. Yeah, punt including in the air. from contact to <laughs> landing, that was at least 75 yards. Holy yeah. smokes! <laughs> and uh, yeah, that that the, the wind is strong, but it's not that strong. I think he's got a good good foot behind him, but next time he's gonna want to let that sit in the air a little longer. Wildcat formation here for the Bulldogs. Dexter Brown, the running back, comes out too wide either side. First and 10 from the middle of the field at the 20-yard line. Gives it to Heisch, and he is absolutely demolished in the backfield. That's a loss of seven back to the 13-yard line. SNU was all oh, over yeah. that. I think Fairchild had the tackle before the ball was snapped. I mean, it was – nobody touched him. He was on the running back as soon as the ball was handed off. Well, and Coach Hayda mentioned that they're asking Brown as the Wildcat quarterback to make reads, and that is a lot to ask any non-quarterback. And that definitely was the play there. Too wide either side. Now second and 17 for the Bulldogs. Sticking with the Wildcat. Brown bobbled it, nearly lost it. He goes down at the 10. Three more yards lost by the Bulldogs. A little kerfuffle yeah. between Colton Morris and one of the Bulldogs offensive linemen and Calvin Cloud going to come back out onto the field after <laughs> minus 10 
on the first two plays of the drive. SNU in prime position with 5.45 to go in the first half to get the ball back with good field position if they can make this stop here, Landry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a big play and a, a play where you get to dictate the, the end of the first half in the beginning of the second half and uh, have plenty of time to do it. Give is to Heiss, trying to get outside on the right. Cuts up field, and he's taken down at the 18-yard line. Gains eight, but it will be time to punt for the Bulldogs. Great job by the SNU defense. Yeah. Coach Heda is excited for his defense. It's a great, great three plays. A very, very, very short series for the Swasu Bulldogs. And even on that last play, I think uh, Swasu got away with a few holds, but SNU's defense uh, still makes the tackle. Rallies around the football, forces them to punt. Under five to go, second quarter, still tied at seven. Thrower to punt, Flores standing at his own 43. It's a low knuckleball, and it dies at the Bulldog 41-yard line. Oh, man. So SNU with tremendous field position. So SNU is forced to punt. Just a 23-yard punt there. On the last drive. From their own 45, or 40, I guess. And within uh, 40, sec 40 game seconds, has the ball in better, 20 yards better field position than they punted in. So, if you're Swasu, you're not pleased with that, but if you're SNU, you'll take it. The intangibles have definitely gone SNU's way. Here in the first half. Ball in the middle of the field for the Crimson Storm. Two wide to the right, one to the left. SNU averaging 5.7 yards per play this afternoon. Robertson to the top of the formation. Porter gives it to Donald May, running right. Scoots through a couple blocks. Down the sideline, 20, 15, makes a man miss, and is finally taken down by Zach Roberts. First and goal, SNU at the seven-yard line. SNU hustles to the line of scrimmage, looking to punch this one in yeah. quickly. Three wide right. And the Bulldogs are going to prevent that from happening, taking a timeout. And Rizel McCoy losing his hat as he loses his mind on one of his defenders across the far side. Big run there from Donald May. Yeah. That's a great opportunity to talk about, you know, Landry talking about SNU's scheme, just how complex it is with Coach Hayda earlier this week. And Donald May is a great example of that. Mentioned that because May was a freshman yeah. last year, hadn't had time to digest the whole scheme, the whole playbook and everything. You know, he was able to only really run jet sweeps last yeah. year because he just had not been in the program long enough to process everything that being an offensive player here requires. And I think Coach Hayda said that Donald May was felt comfortable in the slot position, which is the jet sweep most most frequently in the in this offense. Uh, but now, you know, you have a, a year plus to to work on these things, to know the terminology, which is which is long, which is wordy to uh, Coach Hayda's uh, own admission. Uh, but once you know it, you can play anywhere. You can play any position. Uh, and uh, we certainly seen that uh, pay off with guys like Donald May and Asa Robertson. All of them move around the field all the time, and they do it with great confidence. First and goal for the Crimson Storm from the Bulldogs' seven-yard line. Ball's on the right hash. Two wide receivers to the near side. Fellows and Ramirez join Porter in the backfield. Now Fellows splits out to the right. Porter fakes the give to Ramirez, who went to the wrong side. Porter escapes pressure in the backfield and fire, finally throws it away. Porter nearly taken oh, down for about hell. a 10-yard sack, escaped, and was able to just throw it out of bounds to preserve the spot. Yeah, and uh, in moving around, the offensive line, they're not going to get credit for this, but but I'll give them some. Uh, they don't run up the field. That's a run play, right? They're, they're run blocking. They're not pass blocking, and they don't get too far up the field when they feel the scramble. And uh, because of that, there's no penalty for a legal man downfield. Second and ten, end goal for the Crimson Storm. May back in the backfield. Robertson makes it three wide receivers on the left. 
Porter gives it to May. Running left. He's got the speed. Can he cut it inside? He does. He hurdles in. It's a touchdown for SNU. Donald May from seven yards out in the Crimson Storm go up with 3.57 to go before halftime. Now, this is the offense we're used to seeing, right? You got on this drive, I uh, have five plays, and three of them are runs, and one's a Gage Porter scramble. <laughs> so, seems more vintage SNU. Same result, though. Touchdown for the Storm. Van Pruyen on for the extra point. The operation is good, and the kick is good. So, 3.57 to go before halftime. Our new score, SNU 14, and the Bulldogs 7. Landry momentum just continues to snowball toward the Crimson Storm. The Crimson Storm have one timeout remaining, but if they can get a quick stop going with the win, they might be able to get the ball back and try to put more points. The Bulldogs will get the ball to start the second half, yep. so a big opportunity here for the SNU defense to get a quick stop and give the ball back to their offense. Yeah, I mean, Swasu, they're certainly not going to be in a hurry to try to move the ball down the field. They haven't in the last three drives, haven't been able to move the ball at all, uh, and you know, that only took one minute to score a touchdown. Uh, this is a, a great opportunity for for more points before halftime, but also just to create some separation between the two teams. That's, that's obviously there, um, but can be exposed more. A drive, officially three plays, two Donald May runs, covered the 41 yards. They get the ball into the end zone. Van Pruyen to send this one away. Henderson and Barnett back deep for Swasu. The run up, the kick, low helicoptering kick. It bounces over Henderson's head into the end zone. So the Bulldogs will get it first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Landry looking at what Southwestern's been able to do. They took the first drive of the game, 70 yards in 10 plays, but just nine yards of offense to show for it in the two drives yeah. since with just eight plays between the two drives. You know, sometimes on first drives like that, when you have a team who's really struggling on offense, and then all of a sudden, the first drive, you know, there's there's lots of factors. It could be the, the defense is not ready to play. or But... But often they're doing something unique that they have not done in the past, and those are correctable things. So, uh, again, I, I couldn't tell you what that, that is, but that's probably the case, and SNU's defense has stood the task and cor made corrections and is playing well. Cloud takes the snap, gives to Heisch, running left. Carter Brock nearly had him in the backfield. Heisch escapes, and he's got space across the 35-yard line. Carter Brock nearly... A big tackle for loss. Instead, it's an 11-yard pickup for Ethan Heisch, the product from Edmund Santa Fe. Yeah, and Garter Brock was the one who made the tackle. He missed the tackle, gets up, runs down the field, makes the tackle. Uh, good effort there. Obviously, you want to make that first tackle. But SNU is blitzing more than they're used to, or at least I'm used to seeing them, sending lots of pressure to rattle this Bulldog offense. Cloud takes a snap, gives it to Heisch again, into the middle of the field, spins off a couple tacklers, and is... Still moving the pile up to the 41-yard line. Five-yard gain. Josh Johnson dumped to the turf by a Bulldog offensive lineman, and now Johnson is down. A little extracurricular activity there. Yeah. But Johnson seemed to be content to just take his time. Getting a trainer out there with him. And Johnson will jog off under his own power. So second and five from the left hash upcoming for Southwestern. Landry Heisch has been really good yeah, in this game. Running hard and physical. You know, and he's doing it with, with a lot of pressure in the backfield, too. Up to 10 carries for 74 yards in the first half. Second and five for the Bulldogs. Under three minutes to go before halftime. Crimson Storm lead this one 14 to 7. Trying to get a stop and maybe getting one more crack with the ball before halftime. 
Bulldogs in no hurry. Play <laughs> clock only at 17. Carsack moves to the right side of the formation. Cloud gives it to Heisch. Right up the middle he goes. He's stoned at the 44-yard line by Cole McMahon. He falls forward to the 45. It'll be third down and one. Big moment here for us and you. Yeah, and you probably, uh, well, yeah, you're probably planning on you know, if you hold them here, you're going to get the ball back. You're probably going to burn the timeout and just hope for something exciting to happen. Two wide right, one to the left. Karsak moves to the right as well. Cloud gives it to Heish. Cuts it upfield. He's got the first down. And he keeps pulling the pile all the way up to yeah. the 49-yard line. First down, Bulldogs. Heish is doing a really good job in the backfield, putting his foot in the ground and making a cut quickly. And just using those cutback lanes, you know, SNU is filling the gaps they're supposed to fill, but are, are unable to break down and make the tackle in the backfield. And if they start doing that, I mean, this Swasu offense isn't going to have any any chance. Uh, but you got to slow down in the backfield and tackle a guy who, to his credit, is, is gifted and hard to tackle. Heist winded as he comes out of the yeah. game. Two wide either side, ball in the right hash. Cloud throws it out. It's caught on the outside. That's Tosquez. He gets upfield to the 47-yard line of SNU. It's a pickup of four. Lost his shoe in the process. Clock yeah. still moving. Or, excuse me, frozen at 115 as he got out of bounds on that one. So everybody can catch their breath for just a moment. Second and six from the right hash for Southwestern. Got a wide receiver, no shoe down here by us, Luke. Gonna run a route, slip. He nearly slipped. Yeah. Cloud, under pressure, escapes, nearly lost the ball, fires it to the sideline, and he just chucks it over the head of Tosquez out of bounds. Tosquez and Ben Rutherford were tangled up there. Yeah, Too busy, were. tangled up, and yeah. neither of them were looking for the ball there. Yeah. SNU maybe a bit fortunate there. Well, Cloud it was looking for Tosquez. I mean, and Tosquez on his get off slips on his shoe, obviously, without or his foot without a shoe. You know, just go to the sideline, get it, get your shoe back on and come back out. They're also not in a hurry, so he had twenty plus seconds to get that on. But I get one to play in. You don't want to come out if you're a player, you're a competitor, you want to stay in there. Third and six. Cloud back to pass. Blitz coming. Looking down the far sideline, it hangs in the air, knocked down by the wind. It falls incomplete. Fourth yeah. down for the Bulldogs. Kenyatta Richardson nearly got to Cloud before he let that one go. Yeah, he certainly did. And Cloud, look, when he let that ball go, it looked like he had enough uh, on it to get, get the ball there. But, man, that wind, when it, it got up there, it just stuck and dropped to the ground. 102 to play in the half. The Bulldogs keeping the offense on the field on fourth and six. SNU crowd getting into it. Yeah, I'm imploring the defense to get the stop. Wonder if this is a quick kick here by Cloud. Yeah, Cloud takes a couple steps back. It is a quick kick. Oh, man. Spiraling kick. It hits at the 13 and dies at the 9 yard line. It's downed actually about the 10. So a nice execution there by Cloud. Yeah. With 54 seconds to play, SNU one timeout remaining. With the wind, Blanger, do you take some shots based on what you've seen open in the middle of the zone for yeah. the Bulldogs? You know, each coach has a kind of a different philosophy on this. I'm I'm willing to take one down where we do our thing. If it's successful, uh, then I'll I'll push it. Uh, you know, with one minute left, you still have a timeout. Maybe you start with some aggression and then back off where you need to. Uh, Swasu has one timeout too, so you don't want to get in a position where you've burned three plays. And then you're punting again. And then Swasu gets the ball again and he can throw Hail Mary or something like that. Although with the punting we've seen today, I mean, he's going to launch that ball in the parking lot with this one. So My car's on the other side this yeah. time. It took some, <laughs> took the damage from a know, kick over the fence last time. Three wide to the right, one to the left for Gage Porter. He's got the snap. He's got plenty of time. Fires it deep. Looking for Jarrell Farr. He's got it in midfield. Taken down at the 42-yard line of Swasu. 
No timeout. They haven't taken the timeout yet. They don't want to until they're in the red zone, ready to kick the ball. 45 seconds to play. The official winds the clock. First and 10 SNU. Two wide either side. Porter takes the low snap. Plenty of time. Flush to his left. Looking. Fires it deep. Fires it into a crowd. Intercepted. Logan Monroe, the middle linebacker, was drifting back in coverage, and he came up with the interception. Gage Porter doing maybe just a smidge yeah. too much there. Well, you know, the right tackle um, got pancaked on, on that play, so the pressure came quickly. Gage Porter steps back. I mean, he has he's thrown to the right person. Uh, but he, again, just launches off his back foot. When you launch off your back foot, you don't get the power that you want, and your ball tends to sail. So it's in the air for a long time. And, yes, you have the win, but if it's in the air for a long time, the secondary has plenty of time to come over and rally around the football, and they did that just uh, um, quite easily on that last play. So 32 seconds for the Bulldogs, first and 10 at their own 10-yard line after Porter's fourth interception of the season. A give to Heisch up the middle. He runs to the 15 before he's gang tackled. Carter Brock holding on around the ankle. Yeah. And that is probably how the first half is going to end. Either coach using their final timeout right now as the clock ticks down to 10 seconds. And I believe as both teams start heading toward their sideline. So that's going to do it for the first half in Bethany. The Crimson Storm holding a 14-7 lead. And if you're an SNU fan, Landry, you know that there's a lot of meat still on the bone yes. off on both sides of the ball, really. Yeah. And you'll, we'll look to see SNU take a few more bites out of it in the second half. But after two quarters in Bethany, 14-7, Southern Nazarene with the lead over Southwestern Oklahoma State. We will take an extended break, come back with first half stats and analysis and get you ready for the second half of action in Bethany. We'll take a break now. Come back after these messages. This is SNU Football. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. One of my favorite things about SNU was the relationships I was able to have with people, with professors, with friends. One thing that was purposely different about SNU was the integration of faith into the academics. I feel like I learned so much from that that helped prepare me for life after college, to be a husband and someday to be a father. It was a really, really transformational time in my life. My degree could have come from anywhere, but my relationships with people, I know I would not have gotten anywhere else. Go to snu.edu to apply or to schedule a visit.
Welcome back to Bethany. Halftime at SNU Football Stadium as the Crimson Storm leads Southwestern Oklahoma State 14-7. to The SNU men's soccer team being honored at halftime receiving their GAC Tournament Championship rings from last season. They defeated Rogers State in the Tournament Championship to make the NCAA Tournament for the first time a season ago. Congratulations to Coach Trevor Harmon and his squad in action tonight. 5.30 over at the SNU Soccer Fields. If you want to get over there to West Harmon Field right after this one, just drive down 50th Street and get over there and support Trevor Harmon's bunch as they look for a third consecutive regular season title. Here, though, we're talking the other football Landry in a solid first half. It looked a little uneasy at first with SNU punting on their opening possession. The Bulldogs marching 70 yards right down the field to take the early lead. But since then, things have gone about like we expected them to uh, based on how the teams looked coming in. Yeah, I'm, I mean, that, that first drive is kind of a, an anomaly in, in what I think will happen the rest of this game. Now, uh, SNU needs to come out and perform. I mean, they need to get Swasu off the field and they need to score. They need to Put some distance between them and Swasu. A team like Swasu hasn't won a game this season. Um, when you give them a little bit of breath, uh, they're gonna they're gonna compete. And uh, we know that firsthand. You know those years that SNU was kind of rebuilding and and uh, building the program they are now. Any game that was within seven points, you thought, hey, it just takes one one mistake. In fact, the game we called against Swasu a few years ago was that same scenario where Swasu just couldn't put the game away and then threw a late interception and all of a sudden SNU wins at just about the last play of the game. So uh, there's there's uh, plenty of game left, but I, I do expect SNU to perform like we know they can, run the ball well, I guess pass now. <laughs> but uh, but no, I do, I do think uh, they, they should come out strong and I think they'll finish strong. Running through the first half, stats SNU. 30 plays, 232 yards of offense, 7.7 yards per play in the first half. 26 plays, 118 yards, 4.5 yards per play for the Bulldogs. SNU, 103 yards on the ground on 17 carries, 6 yards per carry, and that includes a 15-yard sack by Jarvis in at the hands of Jarvis Davis uh, in that first quarter as well. Landry, the front seven for the Bulldogs, really good up front. But SNU has found success moving the football still. Yeah, you know, we talked about it at the end of the first half. They, I, I think with their Swasu's desire to stop the run, they have been uh, playing downhill. And they're good at playing downhill. They've been good at playing downhill all season. Uh, but in doing so, it's left just big, huge holes open in the passing game. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I wonder if Southwestern will, will back off. And if they do, I expect Coach Hayda to adjust back to his bread and butter, which is run the football with Gage Porter. Individually, Gage Porter, seven carries, 45 yards, and a touchdown for the Crimson Storm. Donald May, two carries, 41 yards, and a touchdown. Jarrell Farr, two carries, 16 yards, and two carries, 10 yards for Angel Ramirez. Asa Robertson, three catches, 65 yards. Jarrell Farr has a reception for 48 yards. Dalen Smith, one for 13, and Aaron Fellows, one for eight. Individually for Southwestern, 11 carries, 77 yards, and a touchdown for Ethan Heisch. One for three yards for Dijon Thomas. Calvin Cloud, four for nine, 42 yards. He's been sacked twice. Taylor Tosquez, three catches, 38 yards. One catch for four yards for Jacob Karsak. Individually defensively, Jake Wright leading the way for SNU in tackles. Five with one and a half tackles for loss. Four each for Carter Brock, David Omasigo who has a sack, and Jalen Mays. R.J. Powell, four tackles and a sack, four tackles for Zach Roberts, three and an interception for Logan Monroe. SNU, three of five on third downs. The Bulldogs, three of six third downs. SNU, five penalties, 40 yards in the first half, two for 20 for the Bulldogs. And time of possession, SNU, a slight lead, mainly just for those Last few minutes of the first half, 16-43 for SNU to 13-17 for the Bulldogs. Again, this is the only GAC game taking place this afternoon. Everything else 
coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, highlighted by Harding at Henderson State. A top 20 matchup nationally. Should be a great game. Great defensive showcase over in Arkadelphia this evening. If you're a fan of good football, highly encourage you to tune into that one later, regardless of the level. It should be a tremendous game, a tremendous atmosphere over in Arkadelphia as well. So Landry, as we get set for the second half, again, a lot of good things for SNU in that first half. Yeah. Just got to finish this one. Yeah, yeah, got to put the game away. Got to create some distance between you and Swasu. Um, but you got to just mentally do the, the little things well. You haven't won the game yet. Got to play hard. Uh, what I'd really like to see, Luke, and we haven't really seen much of this year, is just a defensive turnover. You know, we've we've actually seen an offensive turnover followed by an offense playing defense temporarily, and they got a turnover. But uh, I, I'd love to see the defense uh, get the ball back in into their offense's hand. And I mean, if you want to put space between a game, that's how you do it. You get an offense with confidence, the ball more and more. Um, you're going to do that. And, and there's a chance Swasu gets a little desperate and has to start throwing the ball. Um, and if if they do, then you can put them into some spots to make some mistakes. SNU just three forced turnovers coming into today's game. SNU did come into today's game the best in the conference in third down defense. Opponents just converting 29% through the first three games. However, SNU has faced the fewest third downs in the conference coming into today. Three of six for the Bulldogs in that first half. Um, but Landry, overall, this is a defense that hasn't been on the field too much. They have faced the fewest plays across three games in the conference as a whole. Now, some of that, obviously, big plays given up get you off the field pretty quick as well. But it is a defense that hasn't necessarily been worn down as much as no. maybe other defenses have in the first three games. And I think we see that as well as yeah. the depth that's been generated over the course of the last few years under Coach Hayda as well. Yeah, there, there's more people flying around. And yeah, like you said, the depth that is there. You know, he, Coach Hayda feels confident that just about in every position they can run two or three deep uh, and, and uh, feel like they're still doing what, what they want to do game plan wise. SNU will be kicking off to the Bulldogs to start the third quarter. Kicking left to right, so the Bulldogs will have the wind at their back for this third period, trailing the Crimson Storm 14-7. Cameron Van Pruyen ready to send this one away. Troy Henderson standing back at his own five with Keon Barnett. Back with him to the near side. Wind's been pretty steady out of the south all day, so we'll see what Van Pruyen chooses to do with this one. The run up and the boot. High end over end kick hanging. It hits at the 18 yard, or excuse me, the 23 yard line and bounces out of bounds. So that will. Give the ball to the Bulldogs and the official saying it will be Bulldogs ball at the 17 yard line. It didn't look like it hit anyone unless it did hit Troy Henderson's hand. Yes, which that... apparently is the ruling down there on the far side by the head linesman. So a fortunate break there for SNU. Tremendous yes. field yeah. position switch there. And not much argument from the Swasu coaching staff. So I wonder if if you're on the money there, Luke, it did hit someone's hand and went out of bounds. So instead of the 35-yard line, the Bulldogs starting at their own 17. One wide receiver to the top, two to the near side. Cloud gives it to Heisch, cuts it back, and is tackled by Jake Wright after a gain of four. Up at the 21-yard line, second down and six. Yeah, I think for uh, from the Bulldogs' perspective, we're going to see a lot of Heisch right, Heisch left, and uh, Heisch right up the middle. I mean, he's been the, the most effective offensive weapon for... Uh, Southwestern today. Second and six. Cloud gives it to Heish. Puts his foot in the ground. It's chopped down by Hiram Flores. He flies up ahead to the 24-yard line for a gain of three. We'll bring up third down and three for the Bulldogs. Flores in great spot. And unfortunately, the air that 
Heisch yeah. was able to get gained yeah. in those three yards. Yeah, Flores tackles him just at the line of scrimmage, and Heisch lunges forward, propelled by his foot. Third and three. Big opportunity for the Crimson Storm to get off the field early. Cloud, back to pass. Quick hitter. He's got his man. That's Elijah Reed with his first catch of the season, the junior out of Jones High School. And that will move the chains. I believe that's the Jones Longhorns. Is that right? It is the Jones Longhorns. Okay. There, just on the east side of Oklahoma City. That's right. They're green though, not not burnt orange. They are. Right. They are green. It's first and ten from their own twenty-eight. Cloud gives to Heisch, running right, trying to get outside, unable to do so. Flores forced him to keep going yeah. outside, right forced him out. No gain on first down as he was forced out at the 28-yard line. And that play doesn't look like much. You don't have someone flying in for a big tackle. That is exactly how you run a stretch play defensively. You push everyone to the outside. You make every, uh, every lane void so there's no cutback and you make them run out of bounds, and that is exactly what SNU's defense did there. Second and 10. Heiss checks out, and Henderson in the backfield now. Cloud gives it to Henderson. Stutter step, can't make anybody miss in the hole. Gain tackled up at the 30-yard line for a gain of two. Host of Crimson Storm defenders on that, of course, Jake Wright being one of them, Cole McMahon in there as well. Wholesale substitutions That's for right. SNU on third and eight. 12.25 to go third quarter, 14-7 to seven Southern Nazarene. I wouldn't be surprised to see some pressure here by the SNU linebacking core. Manuel Obina, Carter Brock in there at the middle linebacker spots. Kenyatta Richardson out there. It's come hard on a couple occasions today. Yeah, and they've left their tight end. Swasky's left their tight end to block on almost every passing route. Cloud. Looking for Karsak on the screen. It's incomplete. Seth Spruill came on the corner blitz from the near side, and Cloud had to get rid of it before he was ready and falls incomplete. Fourth down, upcoming. Yeah, and Karsak is the tight end. He sneaks out uh, on the play action, but even if he would have had his head around, that, ball, that ball was about five yards behind him. Good, good stand by the defense for the Crimson Storm, getting your offense on the field early here in the third quarter. Dayton Thrower on for his fourth punt of the afternoon. Sends this one high end over end. Flores catches it at the 30, makes the first guy miss. He's got a lot of space. 40, 45, cuts inside of the 50. He's in the Bulldog territory at the 48-yard line. A great return from Joa Flores of 22 yards. And SNU in prime field position to start. The third quarter on offense. Yeah, Joe Flores. It's not a it's not super fancy move. He just puts his foot in the ground and changes direction as soon as he catches that ball. And there is no one around him. I mean, he, he ran 20 yards before there was even a defender within five yards of him. So great field position for for Gage Porter. I think they take a shot here, Luke. Come out and diamond package. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. <laughs> Donovan Hill, the one wide receiver in the formation to the near side. Now Farr comes to the near side as well. Porter gives it to Colby Branch. Running right, evades one tackler, gets up field, and is thrown unceremoniously out of bounds by Logan Monroe. He gains one. Actually, they're not going to give him anything. So second and ten. And Branch did a good job not losing five or six yards on that, able to cut it back up field. Second and ten from the right hash. Two wide split out to the left. Now Farr comes to the near side for SNU. Porter fakes the give to Ramirez, pulls it out of his belly, trying to get to the outside and slips down at the 42-yard line of Swasu. Six-yard gain will bring up third down and four. Yeah, and Freddie Mango giving uh, Gage Porter a tap on the back saying, thanks for not putting all your weight into me. <laughs> Gage <laughs> Porter going down to avoid some contact, and I think Mango 
equally as pleased with the avoidance of contact. And if I was him, I would be too. Absolutely. You don't want you don't want five eleven two thirty coming at you full steam. <laughs> Third and four for the Crimson Storm from the left hash. Porter gives it to Ramirez, trying to bounce it outside to the left, put a puts his hand in the ground, keeps his balance, gets all the way up to the forty yard line. A lot of movement there for two yards, but nice effort there from Angel yeah. Ramirez. Be fourth down and two. Let's see what Coach Hayda decides to do right here. Yeah, I, I think this is almost a no-brainer for Coach Hayda. Fourth and two, you're going for it. And here comes Donald May, a little bit of speed out there. As Angel Ramirez jogs off. Play clock still at 20. This is under a, 10 minutes to go, third quarter. This is a classic position for the Storm to run a draw. Uh, fourth and short, get the ball in the hands of your quarterback, make the defense think a little. Branch motions to the near side. Porter fakes the give to May, and he is swarmed in the backfield. The left side of the offensive line couldn't quite hold on. Savon Cephas was in the backfield and took down Porter for a loss of one back to the 41-yard line, a turnover on downs as the Bulldog defensive line does its job. You know, Porter, just about every, every time he has the ball, has to make a read, and he almost never makes a mistake with that one. His head... Uh, was not looking at those backside ends. When he pulled it, he was swarmed instantly. I think Donald May might have been the better option on that one. So the Bulldogs take over first and 10 at their own 42-yard line. The give is to Heish. Heish gets outside on the right side, and he carries defenders all the way up to the SNU 49-yard line, a pickup of nine on first down. And Landry, honestly, Heish, obviously, it's a hot day. Yeah. And he's carried a lot of the load offensively, but it's been really unfortunate for the Bulldogs because Heish, every few plays, is asking to come out of the game. <laughs> you just wish that he'd be, you know, that he'd be able to stay in there just maybe another play or two longer. Well, they're they're slowing break the game. It. They're slowing the game down a little bit, and I and I wouldn't be surprised if they're slowing it down to get him some some breathers. Second and one. Heish puts his foot in the ground, crosses the line to gain. He only gets two, but he only needed one. Cole McMahon in there on the tackle along with Nick Blanchard. So first down for the Bulldogs at the SNU 47-yard line. Clock moving, 8.38 to go, third quarter. SNU leading 14-7. to seven. Bulldogs in no hurry. Play clock at 10. Cloud moves into formation. Two wide receivers left, one to the right. Cloud back to pass. He's got time. Fires it down the far sideline, looking for Takez. And a nice job by Josh Johnson, reaching in there with that left hand to break that pass up. I know. If Josh Johnson doesn't stick that hand in there, that is a completion for sure. Perfectly timed. Perfect position. Uh, good good job by Josh Johnson. Second and 10. Guy they called J2. Didn't play in the win over Tech. Was back with five tackles last week in Alva. Cloud back to pass. Got time. Taking another shot on Johnson. Takez reaches over his helmet. Incomplete. And a flag comes in from the head linesman yeah. who is... That, that Watching things at the line of scrimmage and threw the flag all the way down the field. Yeah, that should not be a, a pass interference. I mean, I didn't see anything. Now, we're far away, Luke, but I didn't see anything to indicate that that was a pass interference. And and again, why is that? I don't understand why the heads lineman is making that decision from that far away. So the call is pass interference on Josh Johnson. So the 15-yard penalty, move it all the way down to the SNU 32-yard line. And Landry Josh never really got his head around. Yeah. So you could maybe make the argument, but at the same time. You don't have to get your, your the, head around. Exactly, in college for sure. But at the same time, it should never be the guy on the line of scrimmage throwing the flag yeah. on a pass. 40 yards down the field you know typically if you if you have someone i don't know typically clown 
Has it. Back to pass. Taking another shot down the sideline. And this time, Josh Johnson intercepts it. Intercepted. They took one too many shots at J2, and he made them pay. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be really rewarding to have a, an opportunity like that. Uh, to, to to really, they're picking on him. And he's made three great plays in a row, and the last one was the best one. I don't know if they're going to pick on him much anymore. They're not masking anything. I mean, Swasu is handing it off to 15 or throwing a fade route to four. I'm pretty sure the it's SNU. A touchback. I'm pretty sure Johnson ran off the field with the ball and then just threw it into the stands. So somebody's got a souvenir in the stands with one of the Swasu Bulldog footballs. <laughs> We'll uh, check the status of that. You can see it on the fan right below us from our vantage point. So we'll see if that uh, stays in the stands. Yeah. Yeah. So the Luke, the I thought I saw them call touchback, and the ball's on the one. You know, I think that might be the right call. It seemed like he did fall down before the end zone, but I don't know. And Jarvis Davis trotting out at quarterback. Here for the Crimson Storm on this first and 10 from their own one-yard line. So it must have been a case of established position in the field of play first. Dalen Smith, the tight end, comes into the formation. Davis, draw all the way up the middle. He stood up. He'll get one yard planted there by Kendrick Milford, Jr. from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah, just creating a little bit of space, some breathing room. Give him two up to the three-yard line. It'll be second down and eight, 740 to go third quarter. Braden Glover is now in at center for SNU. Zach Cizik moves over to left guard. Porter gives to Ramirez into the teeth of the defense the pile continues to move all the way up to the seven yard line so a gain of four for ramirez nice push by ramirez and the big fellas up front so andy cardenas currently out of the game see him down here on the sideline below us has his helmet and is in kind of the back of the offensive huddle porter going quickly here back to pass fires it up field and that is going to fall incomplete confusion on the route it looked like as Donovan Hill and Jarrell Farr both ended up in the same spot. And a quick three and out for the SNU offense. Yeah, I know. I, I Yeah, I certainly think someone was supposed to run a corner route there, and there was no corner to be seen. There were two out routes at 15 yards, though. Uh, so someone might have had a little bit of a mental bust. So Adam Atwell punting from two-thirds back in his end zone into the wind which is hanging a little loose at the moment. Bulldogs looking like they're coming after him. Henderson standing at the SNU 45. Atwell, low wobbler, takes a nice SNU hop across midfield. Henderson wasn't in front of it, and it rolls all the way down to the Bulldog 36-yard line. So a terrific punt there for Adam Atwell of 57 yards. And that was absolutely huge. But we'll talk about that when we come back after this break. 6.42 to go third quarter. SNU leads 14-7. to This is SNU football.
Welcome back to Bethany Bulldog football out of the break. 6.42 to go third quarter. The Bulldogs come out three wide receivers left, one to the right. That's new, unable to take advantage of the Josh Johnson interception. Counterplay to Heish, and he's going to be taken down. Jamari Johnson right at the line of scrimmage, making a great play in the hole, Landry. Yeah, Luke, we talked about this at the, at the beginning of the game. Sometimes you don't have to make the, the prettiest tackle to be effective. That was a tackle for no gain, and he just got any part uh, uh, of the running back that he could. And for that tackle, it was his shoe, and he held on, and the rest of his team rallied around and cleaned it up. And then that's really, if you're going to slow this running back down, I mean, that's what you got to do. Just hold on and let your teammates come help you out. Second and 10 for the Bulldogs. Heish, 94 yards on the ground today. And whistles blow. And a timeout taken by Southwestern. And we'll keep it here through the timeout. And pace of this one, Landry's really just slowed to an yes. absolute crawl on both sides, really. Yeah, I mean, normally an SNU quarter is, is almost exactly the time that is on the clock. Um, and this one seems to be a lot of possession change where for, I think, the first... Uh, first half, halfway through the second quarter, there'd only been three possession changes, you know, which is which is not many, and there's been a lot, at least that many already in this this half. But the defense has a good chance to get off the field here, get the the ball to their offense. I mean, you think Josh Johnson makes a big play, and just an unfortunate spot after that interception where they can't take advantage of it. So uh, it's hard hard to move the ball from your own one yard line uh, effectively and Stevens is playing well, Luke. I think uh, after that first drive, man, they've they've really looked like a solid defense. And the defense statistically we've seen this year. Take out that first drive, 10 plays, 70 yards. And Southwestern's averaging less than three yards a play since. Cloud back to pass. Fires it to the far side. And a nice play by guess who, Landry? Yeah. Jake Wright flying in to break up the pass intended for Zion Mercer, and it's third down. I didn't even need to see his number to know that he was making that play. Right, all 5'7", 185 of him, leading the team in tackles today. Makes a tremendous pass breakup there. On a play to the far side of the field, bringing up third and long for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs just 23% on third down this season. Two wide to either side. Clout swings it out to Heish, trying to get upfield. The hold. There's a hold. A flag comes in. Heish doesn't make the line to gain anyways. He's taken down at the 44 by Cam Flowers. But Ethan Miner was grabbed mercilessly. Yeah, and, and Heish just walked off a craft there. I mean, we might know why he's going in and out of the game so much. It's hot, it's humid. But, man, that was a hold that I think, you know, including me, uh, but uh, I think the whole crowd yelled hold in unison. So SNU declines the penalty. It's fourth down and three at the Bulldog 43-yard line. The offense staying out there right now. For yeah. the Bulldogs, an interesting choice on both sides here. Well, we've seen the quick kick from the, the quarterback already this game, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see it here. It does it look like they're signaling in a call. So here we go. Big play. Fourth and three. Bulldogs in their own territory going for it. Cloud gives it to Henderson, and he slips down in the backfield. SNU had it wrapped up anyway. Turnover on downs. SNU ball at the Bulldog 40-yard line. Yeah, even if he doesn't slip, I think he's toast uh, behind the line of scrimmage. There's too many SNU defenders around him on that play. It didn't have a chance from the beginning. Absolutely not. And the SNU defense comes up big. Clock. Still running inadvertently. Finally get it stopped at 519, but it needs to be about 544, 45. 
somewhere around there. Good job, Luke. Off just by a few seconds. Good eye. I think it was at 549 before the play started, so it's like that play didn't even happen <laughs> according to the clock. <laughs> Apologies to statistician Tanner Stiles down there who has to deal with that now. Yeah. <laughs> First and 10 SNU in Bulldog territory. Aaron Fellows to the top of the formation. Porter gives to Angel Ramirez, picking his way right, follows the block as Zach sees it, and he breaks free. 35, 30, 25, inside the 20-yard line before he's taken down by Logan Monroe. What a big gain on first down. Of 21 yards for Angel Ramirez. And when Angel M Ramirez can run like that, it takes a ton of pressure off of Gage Porter. I know he's making reads, but it also preserves his longevity this season. Porter has it back to pass. He's got time. Floats it for the back of the end zone. In and out of the hands of the cornerback, DeAndre Scott, intended for Colby Branch. Yeah. Second and 10. That one was well covered by the Bulldogs. I think, I think he was hoping Scott was going to be on the outside and Scott made a good play by adjusting his coverage to come towards the middle you know they run a cover four or modified cover four most of the time which means those cornerbacks and safeties have a quarter of the secondary but on certain routes and on certain you know calls from the defensive coordinator they will swap so the safety might be in the middle but will swap to the outside it seemed like that happened there second and ten porter Gives it to Aaron Fellows. Running right. He's got blockers in front of him. He's upended by Zach Roberts at the 16-yard line. Gain of three. Third down and seven for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, certainly not in a rush here for the Storm. Pick the play that you want. Your money play. Third and six. Get a chunk and then go from there. Need, need points on the board, though. Fellows comes out, drill far into the game. Haven't seen Asa Robertson yet on two offensive possessions in the third quarter. Third and seven from the right hash. Three wide receivers right, and Gage Porter's going to need to burn a timeout. This play clock was down to two. We'll keep it here for just a moment. Not seeing, not seeing Asa Robertson even in the... Offensive huddle as they head out there. Andy Cardina is still out of the game at the moment at his left guard spot. Kind of a patchwork offensive line today, but as Coach Hayda mentioned, Landry, all these guys have a lot of experience in this system. They know what to do. They can play multiple positions up front. So not a not a monumental ask for any of them to step in at any spot. Yeah, and, and even more so, they they all learn all the positions, you know, except maybe center, you know, which has a, a little more technical uh, component to it. They play guard, they play tackle. Some of them play center and guard and tackle, uh, but they learn all the positions so that when things like this happen, it's not, okay, who's our backup guard? It's, okay, what's our next lineman? And you can put the best lineman in no matter the position because they all know it. So SNU comes out of the timeout, 4.30 to play in the third quarter, 14-7 to 7 SNU. Three wide receivers left, one to the right. Carlos Cepeda in the backfield with Porter. Here's a snap. Porter blitzed. He gets away from it, fires it back across the field. Can the ball get there? He's got it. Who's got it? It's Tisdale at the one-yard line. What a throw from Gage Porter. We have multiple Bulldogs down on the field as... Several blitzing Swasu players collided right at the feet of Gage Porter. Trying to see who all is down. Yeah, it it looks like Logan Engel. Freddie Mango was slow to get up. And Freddie Mango got blitz picked up by, I think, Jarrell Farr on that play. And I think Richard Silva was the third. He is up, but Mango and Engel are still down. And what a throw from Porter and a catch by Tisdale. We saw Tisdale make a tremendous catch right at the one-yard line in the season opener. And this was nearly a carbon copy of that, Landry. Yeah, it's a, quite the catch. And, and that throw, I mean, it's on the run, going backwards, tossing it 
just about 50 yards. You know, it doesn't seem like that. Mango's up. Engel also up. Engel favoring his right leg as he is helped to the sideline. Mango also seems to be favoring his left leg. Both training staffs out there to attend to the injured players. But a tremendous conversion on third down for the Crimson Storm. First and goal from the one-yard line for SNU. 4.19 to go third quarter. And with how the defense has played, Landry, a two-score lead is a big thing right now. Absolutely. From the right hash, Porter takes the snap, slips down in the backfield, and loses three yards back to the four. Yeah, that's a frustrating first down. You you have two of their starting defensive players, interior players, out. And they they got what they wanted. They want Gage Porter on that quarterback power with a pulling guard. And uh, I think they'd have had a touchdown. But unfortunately, the turf monster has many... Uh, it's taken down many a quarterback. Kajeda mentioned Gage dealing with some lower body injuries. So, but how could you not be with how many times he carries the ball? We'll do it again. Second and goal. Porter cuts it up inside, and he's in. Touchdown, Gage Porter with 3.23 to go in the third quarter. SNU goes up two scores. Yeah, and here's the distance that we've been talking about. Defense is playing well. They just need to get some points on the board. And I think things are going to continue to roll here in the third and fourth quarter. Been prudent on to attempt the extra point. Push it to a 14-point lead. Snap, hold, kick on the way. And it is true. So 3.23 to play third quarter. Our new score, Southern Nazarene 21, Southwestern 7. We'll take a break and be back after these messages. This is SNU Football. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Twenty-one to seven, Southern Nazarene with the lead in Bethany, Luke McConnell, and Landry Franks with you on this warm and humid September afternoon. We pine for the days where we'll need jackets in the press box. <laughs> Today is not that day. Still weeks away from that. But SNU, and U, eighteen and a half minutes away from their third win of the season, leading twenty-one to seven. Troy Henderson, Keon Barnett back deep for Southwestern. Cameron Van Pruyen on to send it away into the wind. High end over end kick. Fair catch called for by TJ Easter. At about the 25 yard line. And that's where the Bulldogs will come out first and 10. Yeah, wise decision for the fair catch there after the. The uh, lack of catching and then the accidental touch on that last one. SNU holding the Bulldogs to three and a half yards per play thus far this afternoon. The Crimson Storm 6.6 .6 themselves. Calvin Cloud in his second start of his career, just 6 of 15 with an interception. 
Mitch McCoy said on the Swasu Coaches Show earlier this week, had some first game jitters. But the SNU defense has done a nice job keeping him off balance today to ensure that those jitters become just poor play. Yeah, and he hasn't had a chance to, to breathe when he's throwing the football. He's got the ball, gives it to his running back, Ethan Heisch, and he is plowed under by the ever-present Jake Wright, Carter Brock in there as well. Gain of one on first down. Second down and nine upcoming. You know, tackling this entire second half has been much, much better. Better fits. Uh, no one's trying to no one's trying to make uh, Sports Center top ten. They're just tackling well and and holding this offense to nothing. Two wide right, one to the left. Cloud takes a snap, back to pass, looking right, back to his left. He's rolling toward the sideline and just shovels it ahead. Incomplete pass out of bounds. Cloud being pursued heavily by Nick Blanchard, Jesse Fairchild also in pursuit. Third down and eight upcoming for the Bulldogs, 2.43 to go third quarter. Cloud with the uh, patented Brett Favre forward pass into the crowd. So. Absolutely. So another third down. Bulldogs 0 for 3 in the second half. Cloud takes a snap, rolls right, pursued from the backside. Richardson, he got there! Kenyatta Richardson put Cloud down, and Cloud is hurt. Slow to get up, helped to his feet by his teammates. He's going to walk off under his own power, but Kenyatta Richardson from the near side of the formation chased Cloud down, who was rolling to his right. Cloud had to avoid the pressure from Carter Brock, and that put him right in the clutches of Richardson. Yeah, Cam Flowers is really the hero of that play. He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't in on the tackle, uh, but he uh, prevented, uh, he pushed the left tackle back into Cloud. Cloud had to slow down, and that backside pressure was able to get there because of his effort. Thrower on to punt. High, spiraling punt. Joe Flores signals for a fair catch at his own 34 yard line. And he secures it with 2.10 to go in the third quarter. Crimson Storm leading 21-7 and looking to build on that as the offense takes the field once again. Yeah, and I think we'll see uh, more of what we saw last time. Just some just taking what the defense gives you, especially in the run game. Joe Flores split out to the top of the formation. Jarrell Farr, Donovan Hill to the near side. It's Donald May in the backfield with Gage Porter. Dalen Smith, the tight end, on the right side of the offensive line. Flores in motion to the near side now. Porter takes a snap, gives it to Donald May, trying to pick his way. Across the 35 he goes, across the 40 and all the way up to the 43-yard line. A gain of nine on first down. For the sophomore from Ardmore. Yeah, Donald May just being patient there. You know, and that's experience, right? I think it's easy for young players on a on a on a run play where you really are waiting for mesh points to happen, for blocks to get picked up. He's patient, sees it, follows his blocks, gets nine yards. Second and one. Porter gives it to May again. Again, patiently picks his way behind the block of Flores. He's got a first down. Up ahead to the 46-yard line. Gain of four on second down. A first down for the Crimson Storm at their own 46-yard line. 120 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, Luke, you know, just trying to teach someone who's as fast as May, like, hey, I, I know you want to go, and I know that you are faster than that guy, but it might be better for you to wait for this 200 something pound guard to pick up this wide receiver before you run. It's a hard concept. Two wide left, one to the right. Porter takes the snap. Fakes the give to Ramirez. Now he follows Ramirez and he slips down at the 49 yard line. Gain of three. It's multiple times we've seen Porter slip down. It yeah. was second and seven. Going back to your point, though, about coaching May to be slower, it's amazing how many things in life. 
that are easier <laughs> if you just slow, slow down, down. That's your right. golf swing, your you know your <laughs> pace on you know approaching you know a soccer kick or anything. You know, lots of things are Take better if you just slow down. Porter bubbles it out to Far. Far's got blockers. Splits the blockers all the way across the 45-yard line down to the 43-yard line of the Bulldogs. That's enough for a first down for the Crimson Storm, and the chains move once again as we come to the end of the third quarter in Bethany. 21-7, Southern Nazarene with the lead, 15 minutes away from a piece of history in Bethany. We'll take a timeout and come back with the start of the final stanza after these messages. Renew is the University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session. Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu. The final stanza upon us in Bethany is the Crimson Storm leading Southwestern 21-7. Luke McConnell and Landry Franks with you for the second home game of the season for the Crimson Storm. SNU. Gave up a 70-yard touchdown drive in the first drive of the game for the Bulldogs' offense. They've given up basically nothing since. Oh, yeah. The Bulldogs have just now matched the production of that opening drive, averaging just 3.2 yards per play. Meanwhile, the Crimson Storm steadily just chipping away at this Bulldogs' defense. Haven't seen a huge amount of explosive plays today, Landry, but they've been able to wear down this Bulldogs' defense. Either way, first and 10 for SNU from the right hash at the Bulldog 43-yard line. Two wide receivers right, one to the left. Jarrell Farr and Angel Ramirez in the backfield with Gage Porter. Here comes Joe Flores to the near side. Porter, back to pass. Blitz off the edge. He escapes the pressure, fires downfield. It's incomplete. Looking for Dalen Smith with Chris Trufant in coverage. Yeah, and... Gage Porter does a good job. I mean, just stepping up in the pocket. The pocket's collapsing. Steps up, sees his wide receiver doesn't make the, the pass, but he avoids a sack uh, as well. Swasu adjusting. I think that was those all verts again. Maybe a comeback on one of those or an in route, but Swasu adjusting middle of the field coverage since the uh, end of the second quarter. Diamond formation here for Porter as he sends Drell far out to the right side. Porter gives it to Flores, running right, and he's taken down by a host of Bulldogs. Trufant in there again, along with Logan Monroe and Johnny Scales. Gain of two for Flores, third down and eight yeah, and from I the 41-yard line. I think you're you're thinking two, my two best run plays right here. You know, uh, maybe you have a pop pass or something, but I think you're just going to roll with what's working and uh, just assume this is four down territory while you have the wind. Ball remains on the right hash. One wide receiver right, two to the left. Far and Ramirez flanking Porter. Now Far comes to the near side. Porter, back to pass. It's a quarterback draw. He's got space on the right side, and he scoots out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Porter had tons of space, tons of time, and he just coasted on that big run for the first down. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and you can tell uh, he's not one to take any unnecessary shots this late in the game, and I don't blame him. Carlos Apeta checking in for Ramirez. First and 10 for the Crimson Storm at the 30-yard line of Southwestern. 13.44 to play. SNU leading 21-7. Porter takes a snap, gives it to Farr, running left behind the block of Zepeda, cuts it back inside. He's going to be taking down Monroe and R.J. Powell in on the tackle. Three-yard gain for Jarrell Farr. It's 
second down and seven. Upcoming for the Crimson Storm. Yeah, no, no rush here for the Crimson Storm offense, snapping almost every snap under five seconds. Porter fakes it, jukes a man out of his shoes, cuts him back inside of the 20. Nearly lost the football when he was taken down by Monroe. But man, he made Richard Silva look silly on that one. Yeah, I think Richard Silva might still be down on the play after that juke. Put him on the injury report for a bruised ego. <laughs> Silva being attended to by training staff. Porter took that one all the way down to the 12-yard line. Puts him up to 83 yards for the game. Silva sitting up now. You know, Luke stretched out for a cramp, it looks like. Yeah. You mentioned uh, at the beginning of the game, Gage Porter had was 12 of his last 13 were over 100 yard rushing and the last one was against Wachita last season second game of the season you know first off 100 yards rushing for a gauge porter seems not very like very many you know i've become accustomed to him rushing for well over you know 150 or whatever but in this game you know he's at 83 give or take uh you know he may or may not get to 100 but offensively they've looked really sharp you know they haven't had to rely on his his run game uh to to keep them on the field you know they've been able to to spread out in a lot of different ways and i think that's just credit to the players obviously but but also the coaching staff being willing to be flexible where they need to be first and 10 snu in the red zone at the 12 yard line two wide to either side for porter in the offense ramirez is the back porter Fakes the give to Far on the sweep, follows blockers right up the middle, and he goes in untouched for his third touchdown of the game. Another tremendous outing for Gage Porter. Three scores on the ground, and SNU goes up 27 to 7. You know, I said he may not get 100 yards. Now he's like 96, so just needs a couple more carries, and we'll reach the quota. All about how long Coach Hato wants to leave him in. Van Pruyen on for the extra point. Sends it up and through. So with 12-16 to play in the ball game, 28-7, Southern Nazarene is our new score. We'll take time out and be back with more after these messages. This is SNU Football. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Twelve sixteen to play in Bethany, 28-7. Southern Nazarene with the lead over Southwestern Oklahoma State. That last scoring drive for the Crimson Storm, 10 plays, 66 yards. Capped off by a 12-yard Gage Porter touchdown, his third touchdown run of the afternoon. 16 carries, 95 yards for Gage today, along with three scores, adding to his nation-leading total of eight coming in to the afternoon. The run-up and the boot for Van Pruyen sails well into the end zone for a touchback. The Bulldogs will start at their own 25-yard line. 
Calvin Cloud was banged up on that last possession. Landry will see if he comes back out in the offensive huddle. See backup quarterback Bodie Boydston over on the sideline. So, uh, and Cloud also yes. over on the sideline right now. Some so. Wildcat maybe coming our see way. What's going to happen here. You know, it's Wildcat, but it's not really Wildcat. Wildcat formation is a little more hefty than that. But gotta... It does look like we're going to have a new quarterback here. And according to the roster we have, it's number 39, Sean Shelby. I don't believe that that is Sean Shelby. We'll <laughs> see if we can get the correct thing. Jet sweep to Dijon Thomas, bottled up in the backfield. And taken down for a loss of four. I don't even need to say who made the play, Landry. That's right. He literally, right. Uh, he has been all over the place. <laughs> well done. Yeah, that well was done. not intentional. <laughs> uh, man, how many, I feel like I'm watching Notre Dame in 1930 right now with a quarterback number 39. We'll go with what we have on the roster, Sean Shelby. Sophomore out of Laplace, Louisiana. Do our best to confirm that that is accurate. Second and 14. Shelby, quick hitter, looking for Thomas. Hits the ground. It's incomplete right at the 25-yard line. Third and 14 upcoming with 11.31 to play. Yeah, it's interesting that back, you know, we're we're on the third back or third quarterback here, you know, and not quite sure. Uh, why? Interesting decision. Boyd Boydston, or Bodie Boydston, excuse me, listed as the backup on the depth chart from earlier in the week. He's a true freshman out of Enid. Third and 14 for the Bulldogs from the left hash. Shelby, back to pass. Rolls to his left. He's got a lot of space, and he's going to run it and just scoot out of bounds, escorted there by Kenyatta Richardson up at the 30-yard line. That'll make it fourth down and five for the Bulldogs. And they will send on the punt team. So another three and out forced by the Crimson Storm defense. Just a tremendous second half defensively for SNU. As they've given up Less than 50 yards of offense here in the second half. Thrower to punt this one away. Joe Flores standing at his 30. Ball skips in. Thrower gets it away. Flores dangerously fields it as 31. But he called for yeah. the fair catch. <laughs> yeah. Tried to run with it, but Put that correctly hand was whistled down. Yeah, you uh, you have to commit to it, you know. You know, Swasu is just, just kind of breaking down. You know, they... You gave the team at the beginning of the game just a little bit of life with that first drive, and they they, they played you know decently well in the first quarter for sure. But man, just the the wheels are falling off a little bit. Not getting snaps back. Uh, throwing the ball on the ground seems like every run now is a negative play, and uh, a lot of that is credit to this SNU defense, who's really stiffened their back and played well. 10.40 to play, 28-7, to seven, Southern Nazarene. And Landry, it's been a really impressive day for the offense, a really strong front seven for the Bulldogs. Uh, the defense for Southwestern, you know, has, you know, they haven't been superb this year, but there's a lot of good things on that Bulldogs defense. And SNU has, has done what teams haven't been able to do this year, and that's run the ball. They're, Right at 200 yards, 199, 5.7 yards per carry. Both of those are season highs and allowed. I mean, this is a Bulldog defense in the season opener. They held Washita to 3.1 yards per carry in the season opener yeah. out in Weatherford. So they, they can do some really good things. And SNU, while lacking, you know, a lot of big hitters like last week's 90-yard touchdown run, 70-yard touchdown run, we haven't seen that today. Longest run of the day, 34 yards credited to Donald May. But they have steadily worn this Bulldogs defense down, yeah. especially you, here in the second half. You're seeing a defense who, who yeah, who has been on the field far too long, far too long. And uh, 
you can start to do whatever you want when a defense gets tired. Um, now, the thing SNU needs to be mindful of is a game like this, you got still quite a bit of time in the fourth quarter, and it, and it's, you know, it's going to take a miracle for Swasa to get back in this game, but you don't want to do anything to cost you the next game. So it's easy to be chippy. You need to keep your head straight and be disciplined and run the ball and get out of here with a win. And one of those things is not exposing Gage Porter to more than he needs to. Jarvis Davis in at quarterback. He hands to Carlos Cepeda. Hard run around the left side of the offensive line. He gains five up to the 36-yard line, making it second and five. Gage Porter with a headset on. That's right. His day is done. Headset and ice bath waiting for him after this game. Good to see uh, Jarvis out there. Jarvis is, has been so committed to the program and a hard worker, good player. Could play at a lot of places uh, around the conference. Second and five. Davis keeps it himself around the right side. Gets to the edge. Cuts it upfield and is banged out of bounds over there by Trufant. But all the way up. At the 46-yard line, a nice pickup for Davis. Ten yards on that one. First and ten, Crimson Storm. Yeah, I think if Coach Hayda had his way here, this this drive would last nine minutes and 50 seconds, which is currently how much time is left in the game. There will be no rush. Which is not much more than SNU's opening TD drive in the first half. Took just a tick under nine minutes. We'll look ahead to the Crimson Storm's schedule here. After this play, three wide receivers to the left. Davis gives it to Zepeda, running on the right side. Good hard running from Carlos Zepeda. He gains seven down to the Bulldog 47-yard line. Landry, the next five games for SNU, we start really for the rest of the season. We start the home away, home away the entire way. Next week at home against Southern Arkansas, that one could be a wild shootout, 49-44. to 44. The Crimson Storm won that one in Magnolia last year. Then on the road at Henderson State, home against Southeastern at East Central. It has been a tough place to play for SNU the last few visits. And then the Thursday night game here at home against Washita Baptist. Porter, or excuse me, Davis, takes a snap. He's going to be wrestled down at the line of scrimmage. Cameron Guyton got him there. Actually, in credit, a loss of one. Back to the 48-yard line. So we'll bring up third down and four. But Landry, looking at the start of the season, we knew SNU could contend. Maybe not necessarily with the Harding and Washtaws. Davis is back to pass. Sets his feet, fires to the sideline. And he's got Donovan Hill at the Bulldog 36-yard line. A tremendous job by Hill working his way back to the quarterback. Yeah, there. and a good hard throw by Jarvis Davis. I mean, he does... Certainly have an arm, and uh, man, great accuracy there, and and Hill just making a uh, a play, helping his quarterback out. Yes, and you going pretty quick. Davis gives it to Fellows, running left, puts his foot in the ground, and he's going to lose a yard back to the 37-yard line. Yeah, and making that... it second down and 11. Fellows a little slow to get up. That first cut he made was the right cut, and he kind of second guessed it. Had blockers in front of him and tried to extend it a little further outside, but should have just gone up the field. Second down and 11. Three wide receivers left. Braxton Bird on the field right now for SNU. He's got it on the screen cast. No, he doesn't. Dropped it. Brings up third down and 11. But Landry, the schedule setting up for SNU exactly how we thought it would. We knew that the three games against the big three, Harding, Henderson State, Washita, tough games. They're tough yeah. games for anybody in the conference, including each of those three. But you look at what everybody brought back, you look at everything on paper, and you came into the season knowing that SNU had a very good chance, a quality opportunity to win every yeah. single one of those other eight. Yeah, and they've, they've been certainly showing that they are they're not just – middle of the road team, but they're competitors in this, this conference, and it's a well-earned competition. Davis, lots of time. Back to pass. Has Hill open? Oh, just a little bit too tall. It goes off his hands at the 22-yard line. Had him open sitting in the middle of that zone. Brings up fourth down and 11 from the 37-yard line. 
Cocheta has the wind at his back here. Looking down at his assistants. Let's see what they decide to do with 7-10 to play. They're going for it. And he's going to go for it. Bummer. I was kind of hoping a 54-yard field goal was in the works. <laughs> we'll encourage him on that next Thursday if it's That's windy. Right. Too always... wide either side. Fourth and 11. Davis has it. Back to pass. Nice block by Zapata. Davis fires it. He's got Joe Flores. He's got the first down inside the 25. A great strike by Davis. Yes. But Landry, that was all on Carlos Zapata on the blitz pickup. Yes. Oh, man. He he read it and knew he was going to take a shot, but delivers a shot as well and creates just enough time for Jarvis Davis to sneak out and deliver a perfectly thrown ball. Clock ticks under seven minutes to play. 28 to 7, Southern Nazarene with the lead. Looking to move to three and one this season. Two wide to either side. Is a pay to the left of Davis. The give is to Bird around the left side. He's got it. He's got the corner. 10 5. Touchdown. Crimson Storm. Braxton Burr, the freshman from Amarillo. Scores his first career SNU touchdown. And the coaches next door, Landry, loving it right yeah, now. That's right. That's right. You got you got to love seeing a young guy getting in on, on twos and scoring his whole team surrounding him. And this is good stuff right here. All the coaching staff flapping their wings like birds right now. Oh, that's great. I'm sure there's some kind of story we don't know about, but we'll do our best next few weeks to try to figure that out. Van Peruyen's extra point up and good with 6.21 to play. Our new score, Southern Nazarene 35, Southwestern Oklahoma State 7. Landry will keep it here through the break. And, and you got Southern Arkansas coming in next week. That one should be all kinds of fun. Quarterback O.B. Jones for the Mule Riders. Probably one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the league, not named Gage Porter with how much he means to that southern arkansas offense yeah should be a lot of fun next week and i mean not we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves or anything landry but there is a real possibility that in two weeks you could have a four and one snu team going to play a five and oh henderson state team yeah that uh seems like a alternate universe even a you know in some ways even a three and two s you know snu team playing Henderson, uh, I, I, it's a, a lot of it goes to the, the faithfulness of this coaching staff and commitment that they have to these players, to recruiting the right kind of players here at SNU, and uh, and to their commitment to their style of football that they want to play. I mean, it has not been easy, and they will be the first to tell you that. But they are paying dividend. It's paying dividends for them now. A run up in the boot for Van Pruyen. Another touchback for the freshman. Out of San Antonio, the Crimson Storm defense back on the field, having given up just 28 yards of offense in the second half to the Bulldogs. Yeah, lots of fresh faces here. Brand new defensive line, brand new linebackers, brand new secondary, minus maybe maybe one corner over here. I think we still have Holden Hill in. Been playing run, quite a bit today. You know, run through everybody who's out there. Seth Spruill out there. Yeah. Lanio Evans out there. Caden Petrie out there along the defensive line. Tavian Houghton out there at safety. The give is to Heish up the middle. And he's going to be wrestled down. Petrie in on that tackle along with Emmanuel Obina. Also out there, number 35, Quentin Smith. Richard freshman out of Pineland, Texas. Into the game. For Obina, Michael Okawobi, there at linebacker, sophomore out of Plano. Shelby remains in at quarterback for the Bulldogs. Two wide to the left, one to the right. Shelby has a snap, back to pass, flushed to his left, lobs it down the sideline, looking for his tight end, Carsack. It floats into the SNU bench, incomplete. Third down and seven upcoming. 5.39 to play and just 
all the incomplete passes yeah. just keep slowing it down for the Bulldogs. And if you're a Bulldog <laughs> defender, you're probably thinking at least just run the ball yes, so we can that's right. so burn more clock. Less on us. Yeah, and you know, SNU has their twos in on both offense and defense. And, you know, usually when people think, oh, my, our twos are in, you know, it's easier. We, You know, we mentioned this in the first game, but twos want to get some reps. You know, they want to play. And SNU's offense and defensive twos want to play, and they want to get some reps. Heish cuts it back against the grain. He gets about six up to the 33-yard line. Taken down by Richardson. Jesse Fairchild in there as well. Fairchild and Damian Powell, right tackle for the Bulldogs, exchanging some words. Yeah. Not sure exactly what happened, but... Neither a big fan of the other one, that's for sure. That's right. Bulldogs will punt on fourth and two. New linebackers coach Stephen Price sitting in the subs. It's Coach Price's birthday yesterday. Happy birthday to Coach Price. Throwers punt. Finds Flores at the SNU 29-yard line. Yeah, I think SNU had 12 men on the field. So this is going to give Swasu a new breath of life here. Maybe SNU will get lucky and... Holden Hill was the 11th guy, and they just played with 10. <laughs> Unfortunately, they will not be so lucky. Get flagged for 12 on the field, so the defense coming back out there with the five-yard penalty, moving the ball past the line to gain for the Bulldogs. They're first and 10 Southwestern at their own 37-yard line. 4.45 to play. Just a reminder... Rest of the GAC kicks off at 6 o'clock. Harding at Henderson State, the big one, obviously. Oklahoma Baptist down in Ada against East Central. Arkansas Tech at Southern Arkansas. Northwestern at Southeastern in a battle of winless directional Oklahoma schools. And o Washita down in Monticello to take on the Weevils. SNU will run their record to four and one over the last five games against the Bulldogs. Heish up the middle. Unable to squeeze through for more than a couple. And Landry Anson used definitely made some good adjustments in the second half to limit Heish, who is yes. making a lot of big plays even early in the third quarter. And they've really limited those as the afternoon has gone along. Yeah, I, I, I'm a firm believer that if you are tackling well throughout a game, running back, wide receivers, whoever's getting the ball is going to want to be tackled less and vice versa. If you're running the ball well, defenders are going to want to tackle you, you you less, and we've certainly seen that today. Give us to Dexter Brown. Tracked down from behind by Colton Morris after a gain of two. Brings up third and five from the Bulldog 42-yard line. Starting line still out there for the Bulldogs, so SNU able to really limit this ground attack. With their second unit out there working against the starting group for the Bulldogs. 3.30 to play. Shelby. Running right, he's hemmed in and thrown it down. Seth Spruill for the big tackle for loss. Lost three yards on the play, and now flag comes in. Yeah, and that's got a couple number. bulldogs. A couple bulldogs in the SNU bench. Josh Johnson with a few words as well for the Bulldogs. That was their right tackle who was having words before in the last series as well. So we'll sort out situation here. Coach Hayda having a quick word with Josh Johnson to cool his head. Take 
So the only penalty assessed was on the right tackle, Damian Powell, for unsportsmanlike conduct. So a 15-yard penalty will move the ball back to the Bulldog 24-yard line. You see the frustration coming out for the Bulldogs. Yeah. Thrower shanks that one off the side of his foot, nearly made the stands, and <laughs> nearly took out a couple fans standing along the fence on that front row. Yeah. But that one, oh, there's no way. <laughs> the field judge marked it. At the 37-yard line, yes. the ball mar barely made it to the 37-yard line I don't think it out did. of bounds. I don't, I'm not sure that it did. I mean, Luke, we're, I'm, I'm standing at the 42, and it was easily five yards behind me. There's oh, zero man. chance that the ball crossed out of bounds at the 37-yard oh, line. Oh, man. But either way, yeah. that's where SNU is going to put it in play with 3.09 to go. We've got a host of backups along the offensive line now for SNU. Tate Upchurch out there at left tackle. John Cantrell at left guard. Braden Glover at center. Aaron Basavich at right guard. And Robert Combs at right tackle. Davis gives to his running back. That's Arian Welch, who spilled down at the 32-yard line. A gain of five for Welch. Sophomore out of Tulsa. Booker T. Washington High School. 5'9", 214 pounds. Yeah. Also out there right now for SNU, Trey Dedman, wide receiver, Braxton Bird out there. C.J. Cardenas also out there, along with Colby Branch and, of course, Jarvis Davis. Yep. You know what I love seeing over here? Gage Porter is, is now the, sig the primary signal caller. You also, have, you also have the tight end over here, Smith, who's making play calls too. Bird in motion to the top of the formation. Davis takes a snap. Pulls it out of the belly of Welch. Spins across the 30. Keeps his footing. Bounces it outside. 25. 20. Cuts it back inside. Inside the 10 goes Jarvis Davis. Yeah. First and goal storm. Shows you how talented he is. He's a, he's a great player and has been a good player for a long time. You know, the reason I mentioned Smith and Porter over here is because uh, this is what you do as a team. You know, when your guys are in, you're supporting them. They've been supporting you all game, and now you get a chance to do the, the same for them. It's really cool to see uh, teammates do that for each other. If you're Bryson Evans, who's typically the main signal guy, yeah. what's your reaction when Gage comes over to you? Hey, give me the signal jersey. You say, okay, you got it. <laughs> Weston Smith in it running back. He's to the right of Davis. Davis, under pressure, rolls to the right and just fires it into the turf out of bounds. Yeah. Incomplete. Screenplay there, maybe maybe not. I don't know if there's anyone open. But, uh... A lot of white over there, that's yeah. for sure. There was a lot of white jerseys on that yeah. side that Davis just threw it into the ground away from Smith. Of course, the younger brother of former SNU women's basketball player Lily Smith wrapped up her career back in March with the Crimson Storm. Two wide left, one to the right. Davis takes the snap, gives it to Smith. Knifing into the middle of the defense, and he is planted at the eight-yard line. The number 42, Timorance Adams, the junior out of Topeka, Kansas. Firm tackle there. Yeah, and this will more than likely be the last play of the game, Luke. Good to see some some fresh faces out there. Good to see some some of the talent that's coming through the pipeline here at at uh, SNU for this football team. Into the game for SNU is number 87, Cole Mills. Sophomore out of Arcadia. Went to Luther High School. We're under a minute to play. Davis gives to Welch. No, he pulled it out. Davis trying to get to the corner. He's hit at the five and spilled down at the four-yard line by Jabrion Peters. Freshman out of Duncanville, Texas. And that's going to do it. This afternoon, SNU doesn't need to run another play. No, and they will not. Final 15 seconds, ticking off the clock. 
Well, here they go. Just kidding. Davis takes the snap, fakes to Welch, rolls out to the left, fires it into the middle of the end zone. It's caught! Touchdown, a crimson storm. Trey Dedmond with his first career touchdown in a crimson storm jersey. Zeros on the clock. And the officials, I think you're saying the ball game's over. Yeah, as it as it should be. Nope. One untimed down. Yeah, I don't think you kick if you have the lead and yep. you win the game. Well, yep. So the ball game is go. over. So SNU scores a walk-off touchdown and wins this one over the Bulldogs 41-7. to This afternoon, big win for Coach Dustin Hayda and the Crimson Storm. They take this one by 34 over Southwestern Oklahoma State. Crimson Storm have now won four of the last five over the Bulldogs, and they move to 3-1 and one overall, and it's the first time in the D2 era that the Crimson Storm have been two games over 500. The teams go through the handshake line. We'll take our last break and come back to wrap things up in Bethany. Final score, SNU 41. Southwestern 7. We'll be back to wrap things up after these messages. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days, I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. It's a beautiful morning, Scotty, and we have an early game today. That injured list, it's getting longer by the minute. Not to mention, uh, there's apparently a nasty virus sweeping through the locker room. Yeah, but these players, they're in good hands. All of them need to feel their best this season, Scotty. Yes, they do, Jack, because this team is on track to win it all this year. Every day, Mercy's team is ready to take care of yours, bringing you the care you need now. Find out all the ways to access Mercy at mercynow.net. Renew is the University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session. Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu.
favorite things about SNU was the relationships I was able to have with people, with professors, with friends. One thing that was purposely different about SNU was the integration of faith into the academics. I feel like I learned so much from that that helped prepare me for life after college, to be a husband and someday to be a father. It was a really, really transformational time in my life. My degree could have come from anywhere, but my relationships with people, I know I would not have gotten anywhere else. Go to snu.edu to apply or to schedule a visit. Welcome back to Bethany. The Crimson Storm moved to 3-1 and one with a 41-7 win over Southwestern Oklahoma State. It was a dominating performance for SNU after allowing an opening drive touchdown for the Bulldogs in the first quarter. The Bulldogs managed just 84 yards of offense after that opening drive, Landry, and SNU held them to less than three yards per play. The offense got rolling, finished with 6.6 .6 yards per play, over 450 yards of offense today for SNU. And just, just a dominating performance, one that on paper, this is what should have happened, and it's always encouraging to see the Crimson Storm do exactly what should be done. Yeah, and it took maybe a, a quarter longer than they anticipated, but, I mean, just the, their best all-around game we've seen in, in several years, defensively, offensively, special teams. I mean, uh, clean, tidy. The only interception that was thrown today was one kind of towards the end of the second half. Uh, yeah, all levels, even the twos, looked good and looked aggressive and played really well. You look ahead down the schedule. Southern Arkansas coming to town next week before a big road trip to Henderson State. And Landry, with how SNU is playing right now, three wins in a row for the Crimson Storm, three and one. Um, all things are on the table right now for SNU overall, which is a really cool thing to say and a really cool place to be for the yeah, Crimson Storm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, we, you know, Luke, when we started the season, I think we kind of predicted that something like this might be possible. But to see it come to fruition and uh, and in the way that they want to play football, uh, I think is really good. And th this game wasn't like a, you know, it wasn't like, oh, we barely squeaked it out. And last week wasn't, oh, we barely squeaked it out. It's, this team is a good team that's playing good football and uh, has a, r a real chance to compete in this this good conference, and especially even with the top tier teams uh, that in years past, you know, we would have probably quickly dismissed. Uh, they are playing really well and are showing why they should be uh, a team not to just um, be rolled over, but a team that's going to compete and probably beat you if you're not ready to play. Let's run through the final numbers. SNU, 23 first downs, 275 yards on the ground, six yards per carry. They had 181 yards through the air, 456 yards of total offense for SNU today. Again, average 6.6 .6 yards per play. Southwestern, 12 first downs, 101 yards on the ground, average 2.9 yards per carry. Had just 53 yards through the air, 6 of 18 passing. 154 yards of total offense for the Bulldogs on 53 plays. Um, you know, again, just a dominating performance on both sides of the ball for the Crimson Storm. SNU held the ball for 34-25, very just 25-35 for the Bulldogs. And a big stat, SNU came into the game best in the conference in third down defense at just 29% conversion. Second half, 0 for 7 for the mm -hmm. Bulldogs in yeah. third downs. Yeah, that'll win you some games. No, no question there. And uh, they, they certainly played like the superior team, and that's what superior teams do. You might face some adversity, but when you respond, do you respond with a dominating force, or do you kind of let them stay in the game? But man, when, when the door was closed, it was locked and bolted, and Swasu did not have a chance to get back in this one. Gage Porter, 9 of 18, 151 yards passing. Jarvis Davis, 3 for 6, 30 yards, and a touchdown. Porter, 16 carries, 95 yards, 3 touchdowns. Donald May. 53 yards and a touchdown. Braxton Bird had the other touchdown on the ground for SNU, a 23-yard touchdown on his only carry of the day. Angel Ramirez, four carries, 33 yards. Jarvis Davis finished with 19 yards on the ground, 16 for Carlos Cepeda, 23 for Jarrell Farr. Asa Robertson, three catches, 65 yards, two for 56 for Jarrell Farr. Andrew Tisdale with one for 14. Joe Flores, one for 14. One for 13 for Dalen Smith, one for 12 for Donovan Hill, one for eight for Aaron Fellows, and the final touchdown to Trey Dedman, one for four yards. 
Calvin Cloud, 6 of 16, an interception, 53 yards passing. He was sacked three times by the Crimson Storm. Ethan Heisch, the running back, junior running back out of Edmond Santa Fe, a nice day today. 21 carries, 106 yards, and a touchdown. But SNU able to make some adjustments in the second half and clamp down on his effectiveness, and that uh, really spelled the end of it for Southwestern once SNU made the adjustments to keep Heisch hemmed in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and they just tackled well. <laughs> you know, we've talked about it a lot, but just those little things, you know, that's that's why I say this is probably their best game. The It wasn't big plays that kept them in the game. They just were disciplined, played well, and they made corrections in, uh, to, to things that were bothering them. You know, Heisch has a great game, but the, after about halfway through the third quarter, he was unproductive at the very best. Uh, and and um, certainly the defense uh, has improved tremendously uh, from the years previous. Run through some defensive numbers. Jake Wright, once again, a tremendous game. Nine tackles, led the team, had two tackles for loss in the game as well. David Omasigo, six tackles with a tackle for loss. Kenyatta Richardson had two solo tackles for loss, had a great game today as well. Logan Monroe led the Bulldogs with tackles in with nine. R.J. Powell with six for the Bulldogs. Just a tremendous game overall for us and you today, Landry, and we get to do it again next week right. with Southern Arkansas coming to town. Should look a little different than today did, definitely. Uh, if last year is any indication, strap up for a long, high, high-octane high offensive showdown between two really fun teams. 49-44, to SNU got the win last year in Magnolia. Should be a really fun one next week. Landry, how can SNU just continue to build on this? Yeah, I mean, they just play efficient and effective football. I mean, uh, do what you're you're good at. Uh, I think running the football is is always their bread and butter. But I think staying healthy, too, getting your guys, making sure they're ready to go next week. Um, but, man, I, there's not much to say. Correction-wise, Luke, I think they just need to keep doing what they're doing, uh, and they're going to be successful this season. Well, that'll do it for us. 41-7, to 7, the final score from Bethany. Uh, for all of us at SNU Athletics, I'm Luke McConnell. For Landry Franks, producer Grant McNew, we'll see you next week as the Crimson Storm take on Southern Arkansas 2 o'clock kickoff right here in Bethany. Have a great evening, everyone. Yeah.